Hello everyone, I'm MC Toon and it's Toon's Day Night. And I've got a debate for you. Um, now, <laughs> I had I had a couple rounds of people set up. Um, and uh, the, the long story short, they fell through and I'm going to be on nothing planned with them except that, well, they know I'm coming. The Tartaria Cosmology Discord server. Um, it's been a couple weeks. I want to see what new derp they have. But first, I want to show you a couple things. Mo, I'll just say Mo sent me this right here. This uh, note from Mo, and it comes with, this is super cool, a Nathan Thompson minifig. It's, if like You can't see it because it's out of focus. Maybe I'll get a close picture of it and post it. But it's it's a Lego minifigure with Nathan Thompson glo globe <laughs> and the sunglasses. He even custom printed... A little shirt, a shirt that Nathan actually kind of wore, I think. So thank you, Mo, for that. Very, uh, very fun. So he was, uh, he, he goes on, he goes on the globe up here, on on the side, of course. So uh, <laughs> Doctor Nimrod says, "Sorry, I can't send you sex right now." Well, thank you for not sending me sex. I didn't want any from you, Doctor Nimrod, but I appreciate the thought. <laughs> Anyway, I've got also a new book I received. So uh, Robin Trabusco contacted me saying, hey, I've, I've got this this book. Um, so I ordered the book. I have it now. I haven't yet read it. I just I just got it a couple days ago and um, got it from my P.O. box. So I do have a P.O. box. If, if pe people ask every once in a while, I do have one. Um, it's on my, I think I have it on my Discord server, or you could message me. I'll give it to you. Anyway, this book here I'm looking forward to read, and Robin has agreed to come on, and uh, we'll talk about it sometime. So there, there we go. So, and one more thing, two more things. Next week, I have um, David, uh, oh darn, I forgot his name. David, uh, oh here it is, David DeHisler who is uh, a, a, an alternative uh, explana explainer for everything that uh, relativity talks about. So um, not Aether, not an, a pro-Aether guy, but uh, so this is, he's not a flat earther. He, does, he, he, he enjoys a little chuckle at them as well. Um, his, his uh, let's see. Dissident Science is the name of his YouTube channel, if you want to check him out there. But he's going to be on next week. We're going to be talking about some topics related to relativity. If you have anything in particular that you think would be a good topic for myself, not nearly, I'm I'm not going to be coming in as an expert. This isn't going to be a debate. It's going to be him talking about stuff, and I'm going to be asking him questions. Um, but if you have any particular stuff uh, that you want to see discussed with somebody that says that he he says he has a scientific model backed by empirical evidence um of all of the things that relativity explains without using relativity if you have ideas on that uh specific one so we don't have this really broad nothingness uh let me know i would i would love uh to um to see what kinds of things people might be interested in so uh, Eric Erpelding, he will have to explain why Maxwell's equations are invariant under Lorentz transformations. Sure. I, so anyway, uh, <laughs> Nicholas Chaudé says no bad talk about kimchi today. Okay. Okay. Anyway, I am going to be uh, joining the, uh, the server, the discord server. Let's see. Um, and uh, if if you want to join, so that server, since the last time I was on it, got nuked. I don't know what happened, but it got nuked. And so if you want to get on it and you used to be on it, and you're like, I can't get on it anymore. The reason why is because it got nuked. So I have the, the link in the description. So um, you can you can check that. Out. Oh, my. I almost forgot. Two weeks from tonight. Two weeks from tonight. Mallory versus Bryant Myers. And I've told Bryant he is not allowed to watch any of Mallory's content. He is going to be coming into a debate with Mallory completely unprepared for a debate with Mallory. 
I'm looking forward to that. I hope you are too. So I got a couple things quick before I, I pop into the server. We got Dave Kirshner, who's been a member for 29 months. Thank you for that. This is in the style of Michael Buffer. Let's get ready to Tunes Day. I don't know. Sorry, Bob. Sorry, I, I could, it could not have been worse, I'm sure. Earth is Life says, need to see you versus Witsit. Witsit! He won't debate me anymore. He's, uh, <clears throat> what's that polka dance that they always do at, at weddings? What's that polka dance that they always do at weddings? Somebody in the chat, what's that polka dance that they always do at weddings? I think that's Witsit. He doesn't, um, when, when uh, Modern Day Debate had had me and Witsit on more than a year ago, Witsit's like, ay, 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 ay. so anyway, yeah. Uh, all right, there, oh, Philip Kidd got it. Yes, the chicken dance. That's the one I was thinking of. I don't know why that came to mind when I thought about Witsit debating me, but um uh, Anyway, <laughs> yes, everybody's once bitten, twice shy. That's not polka. I don't know if I've ever heard that at a wedding. Good song. All right. <laughs> I've seen the Weird Al movie Weird, the Al Yankovic story, twice in the last week. Go watch it. All right. Here's uh, here is the the Tartaria Discord server already in action and i'm going to pop in and uh see what they have to say i, th I think what i have to do is i have to ooh, uh, i have to join the waiting room in between hey in between. Here. we got we got our we got our best guy here it's going to be just you versus smurf go smurf. <laughs> we'll let him go for like 20 minutes um, <laughs> wow that was quick who's smurf <laughs> you you know you know who He's would just smurfy. Up Smurf. Well, what would fuck up tune is, what would fuck up tune is if he provided flat Earth positive evidence. Oh, that did totally mess me up. So hey, McTune. Uh, hey. What about your 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 daily experience? Everything you experience, twenty four seven. What about that? That's that's no proof. No, uh, no. Nope. All right. So are you serious about Smurf or or not? Was that a, I don't uh, know. I'm serious. Serious. Yeah. I'm up to the challenge. Let's do it. All I'm right. taking the gloves off. So All right. Shane, Shane, gloves off. Um, what? In order to participate in a serious debate, I would have to know what the specific topics of discussion are going to be. Because it's if just it can, I mean, but it, that's so broad. There's so many. Yeah. There's so many arenas to debate within that topic. Well, there and, are if you. You can always have a person open with their dissertation or their, their their entirety of their premise, and then you can choose what you want to attack. Yeah, yeah you could you you could like uh, you know agree ahead of time with the person on what the topics might be. You can do that, right? I think yeah. That's hey, let's do it. Go ahead. I, I'm not very good at math, but it's really obviously flat. That that's I that's mean, it. No, I mean, pick any subject you like. I'm just oh, math's okay. not my forte. Well, yeah, I, it's, it's, it's kind of a uh, pretty common, I guess. Um, so, uh, ooh, not true. Yeah, not true. Well, oh, all right. I haven't met one yet. That's good. Well, I've met two or three. Like uh, Mind of God. You, what kind like, of he's, math? He's okay. I mean, just geometry. What kind of math? It is a grown. I mean, it is a grown. Uh, uh, field I equations, thousand equations. Differential I'm, equations, what? Uh, just the geometry is anytime. Yeah, that's, that's pretty basic. Anytime geometry. Like, <clears throat> oh, one thing. Let's hear smirk. I just want to say there's endless, a thousand endless reasons why the Earth is flat, and you don't need math to prove it. There, there's many visual and apparent and obvious, and I'm not great good at math. Is all I'm saying. So you pick whatever you like. Oh, All right. Well, yeah. let's let's see it. Go ahead. You, there's there's you said thousands. I'm ready. Uh, well, it's just obvious to me is all I was saying when you regarding what subject you want to choose the subjects to go over. Name one. Uh, uh, how about the ahead. the the horizontal angle of sunrise and sunset in? Uh, well, we're it's coming up next month. The um, solstice as seen from Sydney, Australia. How about that? 
Okay, uh, check this out. You said the horizontal sunrise. Uh, I know that you can, z when it appears to sunset, I know you can zoom in and see it, and, and you can still see it. So, so after really? the sun, after the sun sets completely and it's gone, yeah. you can zoom it back in. Oh, yeah, I've never yeah, seen that. that. Get well, get that video. What? You'll be the first. <laughs> I don't have it, I don't have it, though. Yeah. Aren't you, aren't you talking about uh, fall and spring sunrise and sunset being due east? Uh, no, I'm talking about the the uh, solstice, which is December twenty yeah. first, in in as seen from Dece um, Sydney, Australia. So that'd be the east west, you know, the horizontal angle or the azimuth. So I think what what, what well, angle not, what angle would flat Earth pre predict? I get help. Somebody will help me fight this one. Dick Tune, off the top of your head, do you know how long the day is? Uh, yeah, in yeah, Sydney, yeah, it's about, in Sydney, about it's it's about yeah. fourteen hours on that day, uh, okay. to my knowledge. Yeah. Um, so no matter Mc how many detailed trigonomic examples somebody demonstrates showing um, the, the what the curvature should be versus an observation in reality, somebody who believes in a globe will always claim, "Well, you're only seeing around the curvature because of refraction." But refraction can curve just around the Earth's curve and not one inch more. So it's, I think it's, that's a different subject, though. Yeah, it's kind I, of a, yeah why are we changing the subject? Different. Smurf wanted a subject. Uh, I, I gave it. And uh, so then maybe it'd be good to stick on that subject for a little while. You sense. know, I'm, I'm not going um, to have a follow-up to the subject. I'll concede that one, but other people here might might win that against you. So I, I'll concede that. I'm confused. Too confused. Okay. Yeah, so let's uh, get back on track. McToons hey. and Smur. All right, well, well, since you didn't like mine, then I'll I'll have you go then. Uh, since I, I started and you 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 you, okay, you check this out. You punched all the it, so. uh, all the space is fake. Like the NASA, it, it's all the all the space station videos fake. Uh, we've seen oh, endlessly the special effects. And it's green screen stuff, and the and it, NASA is literally a word that means deception, you know, in another wow. language. Wow! And yeah. do, you, do you like do you like lying? Do, don't you don't you think that it's a little ridiculous to bring a lie to this? This is my why, beliefs. Why no, would you ahead. Why would you just bring such a blatant lie to that? I've spoken to people whose first language is Hebrew, and they say that NASA means no, to lift up. Theory. It's in the strong. No, Hebrew I'm sorry. Component. I spoke to specifically people whose first language is Hebrew, no, and is they true. told me they it. told me that NASA means to lift up, and NASA N A S H A means to deceive. But that's a different word. Yes. NASA yes. with an no, S, no. not an S H, means to lift up. So why would you bring such an obvious lie to this? So quick. Oh, those two words sound the same. That's oh, they why. This sound the same. So shell and cell are the same word now? Yeah. Well, it, it's, it? it's suspicious. No, no, no. It's so according to you, let's be clear. How NASA is so similar yeah, yeah. to a word yeah, that means yeah. deception. So, right. so cell and shell are now the same word, right, to you? Is that right? Well, I'm not arguing that. What I'm arguing is that the word Na the abbreviation NASA is extremely similar, basically the same as it's NASA. Not, it's not, or, it's not, it's not cool. basically the same. It's, a com yeah, it's an absolutely completely different word. Even if it's technically different, it sounds basically close enough that it's suspicious. Okay. Yeah, but so, so yeah, so the word cell and shell are basically the same word because they're so close that they're suspicious. Well, that's a straw man, but listen, yeah. listen, you're not doing us any favors, Smurf. That's all I'm saying. I love you, buddy. We're not doing us any favors right now. I think yeah. it is. You're, you're doing really badly. Listen, listen, yeah. McTunis, yeah. McTunis, paid, listen, McTunis paid the big bucks to be here, so let's. Well, I'm, I'm up to the challenge. You, know. you guys even realize let, where okay. So, how about some evidence let, let, for let, flat Earth? Uh, what, what, what do you got for uh, that? You can see so, way further than you should see. That's the evidence. It's right, everywhere. Let's, let's see it. Let's see it. Well, for example, the black swan thing with That's, the oil rigs, it's obvious. So, you know, it was 10 miles away, and, and you're it's not supposed to see more than like 3.6 miles. And I'm not good at math, okay? So this is... Yeah, why are you bringing math into this, then, if, if you can't yeah, do the no, math? You my can't bad. back up the math. Was, it's my fault. I'm not good at math. But I was yeah. trying to say, you can see real far across large bodies of flat yeah, uh, well, water. Yeah, but yeah. if you can't do the math, then... Because the, I'm, I'm going to ask you to show the math. 
So if you can't do the math, then you're going to have to, you know, either do the math or well, take the topic that you can handle. Well, that was all of it, man. Uh, you know, I'm not getting into big formulas, but but basically, you, we could see really far across large flat bodies of water, you know, and there's a whole yeah. lot of videos everywhere about that. Yeah, yeah. Well, now one of my favorite. I'm just going to let one of my favorite flat Earth debunkers handle this one. Fraction, which we immediately and adamantly claim is always me. present because there's temperature fluctuation and atmospheric conditions that are consistently affecting what you oh. perceive. So there you go. So, so I, so I think so many people are wanting to go at you, make tunes that maybe right, one at a time. Well, yeah, hey man, yeah. maybe if you guys don't interrupt, maybe after hey. you, you and Smurf. I can never tied, man. I don't know, you know what. what? I, I have a question much. for Thanks, Smurf becoming a flat Earth liability. Yeah, let's let's get Cyrus mm -hmm. in here. Cyrus, real, Cyrus, real. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's, it's a Cyrus, personal question. Cyrus, let's go uh, for it. Okay, uh, I was just I heard him dissing earlier, just uh, about math and whatnot. What's the highest like level of math you've studied? Me? Okay. Yeah. Uh, just uh, probably just figure middle school math. I I can complete middle school math is probably all you need to really figure. Or have you, have you ever have you ever done calculus? Yeah, I, I mean, I don't I don't want to brag, but yeah, I, I mean, no, middle school I, math yeah. middle school math is is basically all that all that I ever need to refer to. Well, yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. I just want to know like what you know. That's that's it. Okay. Well, um, I I uh, majored in electrical engineering and computer science. So a part of that is uh, oh, full fascinating. Yeah, full full year of university level calculus, followed by yeah. differential equations and matrices and vector stuff and all this. But not needed for today. No, nothing that. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, man. That was my question. I mean, it's a very impressive exactly. background. Uh, uh, hold on, hold on. Let me ask Big Tune a question. Do you know the difference between kinematics and dynamics? Can you explain that to us? Uh, kinematics and dynamics. I don't know yeah. if I could if I, I, I can. I know the difference. Yeah, I don't There's know if I can give it a nuance. Well, I, okay, well, somebody else answered for me, I guess. All right, so go ahead. No, no, no. I, I, There's kinematics and kinetics, like kinematics and kinetics. Like which one? Which one are you? I, I'll talking? put the definitions. I'll put the definitions I, I, in uh, the live stream there for you. Okay. All right. Because the the problem is that you, no matter what math you're doing, I mean, if you're working with math with uh, geometry or kinematics, because it's not dynamics. Dynamics deals with the actual <laughs> real-life situation, the mechanics of the heavy bodies or, or whatever it is that you're trying to prove with the, the heliocentric model. And I think that a lot of the problem is that the heliocentric model focuses on the math and tries to treat geometry and kinematics as forces, whereas you really need dynamics for that. Yeah. I, well, I, I, I did... Uh, one, one, of, uh, one of the topics of study was... Uh, being an electrical engineering uh, major, we had to study some of the mechanical engineering stuff. So I took some courses in mechanics, uh, or sorry, statics and dynamics. So yeah, those are those are basic. Uh, speaking of static, the constellations are always static. There's no parallax for thousands of years. They they line up with the pyramid. Okay, well, could you could you show me the the measurements greater to one arc second for those, please? I thought everything's moving in five different fluctuating speeds I'm sorry, in different. You, you change the topic. Could you, Smurf, the Smurf? You just change the topic. Could you just show the, the measurements to support your claim, please? There. Are, what my point is is that no one's ever measured a, any any change in the constellations. You sure about that? Yeah. Do you do you want to do you want to sure back up that claim with evidence, or do you want to just run from that claim? No, I believe that to be true. Isn't that true? It yeah. is absolutely Aren't the not true. Are the same, so like yeah. horoscope and stuff, no, forever? So, For sorry, that year. so there you go. I just I just posted measurements of uh, the the position specifically of Polaris okay. over over four hundred some years. So Tycho Brahe measured it at eighty six degrees fifty three yeah. seconds, and currently it's it's about a half uh, a degree away from the center. So it's definitely moved over time. Now this is very interesting. Thanks for bringing that up, and and you know I'm just gonna um th yeah I don't know the answer to this actually. Th well, thank you for bringing that up. So so yeah maybe maybe before you just repeat something you heard, actually look it up. Just no, that's what I really believe. Right, but, uh, and then right, and once you look it up, validate it to make sure it's true and not just an assertion based on. Hey, you know what? I would love to hear. Uh, 
my, Michael J. Smith just tear apart uh, uh, McToon here. Uh, that would be great, actually. But um, I also just posted something. I have to get to, to uh, mute for a minute. But uh, I posted something in the live stream. I'd encourage McToon to read that or any flat earther that wants to challenge him on some of the basics there between kinematics and dynamics and how that's an important thing to focus on when you're talking about math. Not his well, area, not, man. He's, he's electrical. electrical I just engineer. have one more thing to say is I'm not very good at debates. It's been a pleasure to de do debate, attack you. I'm not good at that. And, you know, <laughs> it's pleasure to attack you. I, I, uh, I, can't, I cannot disagree. Somebody else here will challenge you now. Ooh, okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I got to dip in like 15 minutes, so it would be awesome if uh, Michael would get on the mic and uh, – I don't know. Did, did you want me to rap? You don't want that. I trust oh, you me. You don't want that. Yeah, drop some bars, no, man. Yeah. No, we got we got a guy. We got a very we got a very experienced guy here named Michael J. Smith. I uh, would love to have uh, a couple oh. questions answered by. I'm sure, right? Yeah, bro. I can't imagine Nick Coon's talented at anything but lying, but you never know. <sighs> yeah, I, I got my grandkids right here, and when I can focus on what I was going to ask, I'll get to it. But I'm not trying to hog the mic. I can I can uh, briefly see, answer see. your question for uh, well kinematics and kinetics. Uh, kinetics you study okay, the motions no. without forces. Um, no, no, that's uh, I'm sorry. So because that's how it is, I memorized it. What the one with the m, you study it without the mass uh, in your equations. So there's no forces. You just uh, study the motion. Uh, that would be kinetics, right? Kinematics. No. Kinematics, yes. Kinetics is the one with the mass, yes. Correct. That's it. Thanks. Your dynamics. Okay, so uh, where where are we at now since... Uh... So that was a Cyrus question? Uh, yeah, that was a new perspective. Oh. Yeah. He, he was was, it wasn't a, I don't know if it was a question. He was just trying to make a statement, right? Me? Yeah, I, I wasn't asking. Yeah, yeah, I was just, I have to go right now, actually. I've just been encouraging people to check out the document I post in a live stream, and there'd be a lot of great topics in there to debate about. Okay. Yeah, the same the same document that we've been spamming for the past year, I guess. Yep. No, I have several different ones. You probably haven't opened yeah. one of them to really actually. You have to download it to read it, by the way. You can't really read yeah, it by, by zooming in. You have to download it, it, is, it to read it. It is okay. pretty small. It's spamming, but there's a lot of really great things. No, you have to download it to read it. It's really large, actually. When you look at it, you can see everything about it. I have downloaded it. it. Yeah, I have to go right now. Have fun. Yeah. Thank you. Perspective. I'm going to have those. I'm going to Michael Brenner. Do you have like a, a better one that we can look at than just the image, like the you know, PDF maybe or something? You have to download it and you can read it fine. It's huge. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah, I've seen all of them. The yeah. same flat earth claims. You mean kind of how like you come around spamming your same more globe arguments? Oh, like, oh, oh, oh okay. Yeah, but mine, the minor, minor sound. And I, have to I, have I see. I have I see. That's the difference then. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> I, I have yeah. another question. <laughs> I'm ready. All right. Uh, do you okay? Do you know anything about um, gravitational collapse of stars um, breaking the first and second law of thermodynamics? The gravitational collapse of stars breaking the. I have not, but I'd love to see the uh, the research papers on that. Okay. Okay. I can get you that. Yeah. For sure. You could send send cool. it. Uh, and you can DM them to me, and I can look at them. But yeah, I mean, without having Will referenced do. them, it's going to be a little. I'm yeah, fly. that's why I asked. Yeah, I'm any. not going to be like, oh, hey, you know this, then. If you don't know anything about it, it's like, you know, you can't really discuss it, right? So, yeah, yeah for sure, man. I'll so, who, who uh, somebody's wondering who sets the two drink minimum in these Discord debates? I already claimed that it was me. I made it. I just made sure everyone was hammered. Sorry, everyone. Okay. I, I should, I should open up, um, open up my tab here because I don't have any, um, you're not like two two shines deep already? I got uh, well. I got I got the tab going. I'll I'll, I'll hit the tune shine in a bit. I'm on my second one. All right. Um. So let's hear. Uh, somebody said uh, Michael J. Fox. I mean Smith wanted to talk. <laughs> I know it's not even yeah. your real name. Oh no, you right. said he had to talk to his. He had his grandkids around. All right. Yeah, we heard a lot of grandkid chatter. Yeah, she's kind of loud. So when I get a break in it. 
I'll let you know. Okay. <laughs> I How think about- I I want to debate Jesse Gordon. I'm pretty sure okay. she is. I'm pretty sure she's giving Michael the break from us. But uh, what do you want to debate him about? All right, Jesse. I, I've got the topic. Let's go. Okay, so as I was traveling to St. Ives, <laughs> I met a man <laughs> with. Uh, great, seven I forgot wives. how many wives. Seven, seven. Seven, okay. wives. seven wives, and the seven wives had seven sacks, and the seven sacks had seven cats, and the seven cats had seven kits. Kits, cats. Sacks and wives, how many were going to St. Ives? Is this from Die Hard? 33. Yeah. No, it was like one. 40, 42. <laughs> 69. No, I think all, it was that's more. That's all the numbers I know. No, I it's think it was zero. more in the almost 3,000 or something. No, the answer is one because the question, the statement was I met a man who was going to St. Ives. He had seven wives. Nice hiccups. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, no, it was as I was going to St. Ives, I met a oh, man. You, and you're still just one, right? <laughs> uh, but, but I is not included in Kit's Cat Sacks and Wives. I, because I'm not the Kit Cat Sack or Wife. Were they going to that destination, one. though? That's the one. Somebody, somebody just here. We got Spooky J Pow said we need to ditch the Imperial system. I agree. We definitely all should use the Scottish sheep units because that's the wave of the future. Yeah. It, okay. I agree with the statement, but it doesn't change the fact that it's never, ever, ever going to happen. Is it will I like it in your chat on your YouTube. Should. No, oh, on on your server there, Spooky oh, J yeah. Pow. Spooky, he's sorry, say he's been here a while. He's one of spooky, our new favorite globers. Spooky J Pow. <laughs> I like I like the J Pow. Yeah, like they, they, they already switched to metric in in a Common Core, I think. I think I read this somewhere. Um, you, yeah, you know, I, already I, switched. I asked it. a friend in in Canada who's uh, you know they're all metric. What they use to measure their the area of a house, and it's still in square footage. Everything else oh, nice. is metric, right? They they use Celsius and they use meters and kilometers and and all that. And they their houses are square footage. I don't know why. Be, because freedom units put man on the moon. That's why. You take that, guys. <laughs> hey, real quick. Hey, Shane, is this being recorded so I don't miss anything? Of course, man. And I'm sure. Okay, what? Well, streaming I, it too, right? Okay, twenty four seven. Okay. Yeah. I got a question. Who fell through in your schedule to lead you to us tonight? Uh, I, a guy named Ryan. I'll just say that. I, so that that was the the one that I had set yesterday, and then talking to him, it, it didn't it didn't work out in the end. So, um, so at at some future date, maybe. So anyway, haven't you already like talked to every flat earther there is? So I was trying to figure one that you I, haven't talked to. No, that, I'm like, there's. No, I can't. <laughs> There's a few. I mean, uh, I gloat flabe <laughs> is still he's sitting here <laughs> accusing me of lying, apparently. Um, but uh, won't won't talk to me. I don't yeah, know. I don't think he's, he's ever done on the mic. I never heard his voice. Yeah, oh no, he he jumps in to give like snide remarks, but then he won't stick oh, around. I got some snide questions. remarks. Do you guys want oh. some snide remarks? I'm right here. I do. Are you, are you good at thermo? Thermodynamics. Yeah. Am I? Yeah. Well, I'm I'm quite familiar with it, I, I suppose. A bit. Okay. How about a bit? The, all right. The area under, uh, in a PV diagram, the area under the curve, what is that? We call that what equals what? The area under the curve of a PV diagram. I guess I don't know that, yeah. Correct. Okay. The- Work. If you don't know. What is it? Okay. Work. Oh. If you integrate that, you get work. The shaded area under there, the PV diagram. All right. And what is P and V? Pressure and volume. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I apologize. Pressure and volume uh, chart. Like if you just plot out pressure versus volume. Um, well, yeah. You take that, Lopez. Yeah, take that. <laughs> <laughs> it's nothing to do with flat Earth, but I'm just kind of testing. I don't teach you. <laughs> Well, what, is, what, is your, what is your opinion on singleton factories in object oh, oriented programming? No, no clue, sir. There you go. <laughs> how, about, <laughs> how about the Artemis launch? Did you guys watch that? Do you guys think that was all real? Of course. What, what would make it fake? That it looked, is, does it look fake? 
Well, yeah, it looked fake, right? As soon as you lost sight of the launch, it looked pretty fake to even most Globers, I think. Mm, but nobody actually lost sight of it. Expect to see with your little Who raggedy eyes. What, what huh? do you mean lost sight of it? That If you lost sight of it, then it can't look anything. You don't see it. Right, well, when you lost sight of it, it's when they flipped to the NASA-provided images that we call CGI, where it looked oh, like... Oh, no, you know, yeah, the, static frame the, the ones that they labeled as animations, yeah. Of course, the ones that they label yeah. as animations right. are definitely animations. So why would they well, need an animation? Are, because there isn't, a, there, going on. there isn't a, a rocket flying next to the rocket with the camera on it just <laughs> to show you what the rocket <laughs> is doing. Okay. <laughs> Right, you, right, that'd be ridiculous. People did say that they did say that to us. I thought that was funny. Obviously, you don't believe that. Thank you. So we just have to trust that the the renderings and their word is good enough. Sure, why not? Why would why they would, lie, man? Yeah, you trust yeah, the yes, right. Why would they lie? No reason to lie. Yeah, You're exactly I, I mean, right. If, if you think, <laughs> I mean, if you think it's wrong, then then or or if the things that you think that they are saying are are not real then then get a video forensics expert or a photography forensics expert to analyze it and 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 uh, give the results well i we think have, i think BF, bfp just did a good video on it recently we did have brian leakey who shot into our discord the second that thing launched to show us his own personal recording which differed greatly from nasa's yeah and then we what? had all uh, we had um red redder who actually tracked it for longer than he did so Hey, yeah. the astronomy, it was astronomy the live that, shape, that yeah. did the real uh, the real work. Um, right, he right, caught yeah. it. He caught it as it as it came back around. About I don't know about ninety minutes later, I think. Hey, that's a lot. Told you that it was real. If nobody had told you that it was real, you would be like, "That's a fucking video game, no question." So that sucks, doesn't well, it? What about the, the thousands of people that were actually there watching the rocket go into? Yeah, there's into you watch the rocket go into space. That doesn't mean it goes into space. Say, "Oh, it goes and up." Then, and then it goes up. And then they tracked it as it went yeah. around the Earth. And sure, they did. They, told you they tracked it, so you believe that. No, right, independent right. people tracked it. I mean, you could track it. You you could track it yourself. But so I did this, just, I don't make any claims. Is is this one of the images that you know is a what is it NASA certified recreation or whatever you want to call it? Yeah, I, put yeah, that one there. I'll, I'll yeah, pull it up here. What yeah. about what about how the okay. images? What about how the images of the Earth match and the cloud cover actually match um the GOES images? Yeah, that's the cloud pretty, cover. It's pretty solid. Yeah, DFE oh, wow. debunking flat Earth. He, uh, Bryant P, uh, Bryant Myers had a really good video on that. He analyzed those yeah. videos or uh, the the uh, the weather satellites and the the uh, artemis or it's actually orion so we're going to be distracted by talking about artemis nonsense when the earth measures flat can we get back to that oh sure did can, you can ever you send, can you send the measurements please well, i was i was curious about the rocket i man. can't Sorry. go get your measurements for you partner you got to do that yourself I already well, so did. Yeah, yeah i already did oh. well then i'm still waiting for that i guess you're just now, wrong man. then you're gonna have to it, is that okay yeah. that you just admit that you're wrong then is that all right for you can no, you do that ever? I, no, I have personally you, have measured, you actually measured, measured it. Though? I never thought that you could admit have, that you were wrong. Have you gone out and tried though, or have you just taken the word of other flat earthers that told you that it measures flat? Yeah, you specifically made the claim that the Earth measures flat. Now you have the burden of evidence to support that claim. Go ahead. No, that's not correct. You have the burden of because you're yeah, claiming the road is moving. No, here, let's try it. That's, that's a different. Let, let's let's try this route. Right. 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 It's a kind of let's a mess. Shane, Shane, yeah, so, can, guys, we, guys, can we can we do something to deal with it? Oh, yes. Hold on, guys. Quiet our loud chatters, Smurf. Everyone, be quiet. Can we get maybe a glat flow versus yeah. a uh, for a little? I think I think that'd be good. Hold on. If we were to say we were going to get to P core, F E core, field engineer no, core, laser that. surveys over Lake Hungry and multiple lakes with lack of curvature being showed with laser, what would what would you respond? Oh, I. You I've, said measurements. Yeah, P core yeah. made regiments. I can get the PDF, uh -huh. but I'm I'm wondering, do you even need the PDF? Or are you? Oh, I don't need it. I can from from memory tell you okay. that experiment number five did measure the vertical temperature gradient, and it was significantly more than one degree per ten meters. Holy oh. shit! So then Earth's the globe. Wow, what a jump! <laughs> oh, it's your fraction. Like that's why it's there's no point in even doing curvature tests. It's always going to be the refraction. Yeah, don't no don't. You need to so, you need so to control your conflating your, variables. The temperature changed, so you got a direct measurement of Earth's curvature. That is so rich. Thank no, you. keep it, going. It, I can't wait to hear the rest. Well, maybe you should further reiterate on the implications of that. So yep. people oh, I know understand. what the implications are. You can't trust the measurement if it's refracted, right? 
if you can if you if you control for the confounding variables so but and I'm, they I'm did, trying to I'm they trying to specifically did not part of the experiment this one little part of the experiment proves that the earth is a globe that's what i'm trying to get I, you to i admit. didn't say that no, no, okay. no, no. I, I, I said i said not that yet. i'll i'll be clear yeah. they measured yeah. more than 1 degree celsius per 10 meters vertical oh. um, difference oh. and that's and, and so a 10 10 uh, meters sorry 1 degree celsius per 10 meters causes light to bend at about 4000 miles radius okay. what about all the other measurements dude oh 4000 miles that's ridiculous yeah. so yeah, but, yeah, all you need to do is control it. Yeah, all you need to do is control for confounding variables, and then and well, so they we weren't done at that vast of a distance. The 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 arc is the radius of the arc that I'm talking about. So mm -hmm. you don't have to travel four thousand miles for the radius of an arc to be four thousand yeah, miles. How, how much of an arc would we get over four thousand miles? How much of an arc? Well, it the arc at one so degree, we can establish yeah, one degree per yeah. ten, yeah, one degree per ten meters will cause light to bend at a radius of four thousand miles. Okay, so if the Earth is a globe, and if light is bending at that or more, then then you can't look at that and ignore that part and say, "Oh, well, that's a what I'm trying to get because it's is, not." What I'm trying to get is a prediction based on what you're you're spouting for say twenty kilometers, twenty five kilometers. A prediction of what? Prediction of bend. Prediction How much would bend. it be off? How much curvature would we expect to see of the laser due to refraction over twenty kilometers? How I mean, much you can repeat the same equation, bend? but it doesn't calculate yeah. it. Yeah. So so if it's it's an inconsistent amount also but the the, the the problem is what's going to happen is it's going to cause the light to bend down more than than just to go straight so it's going to bounce off the water and when you look at the pictures then you can see that the water has a big smear of the laser yeah, across more, it more isn't really a measurement or a predicted amount no it's not it's it's, it's just... not very useful at all i agree. no it's not so yeah so i don't know why you brought it, it up well, the, maybe the bring survey up some... was done over 20 kilometers, and I've seen no correlation to the number at 4,000 miles to the 20 kilometers. Yeah, but but they didn't actually... Uh, it creates an equation. Yeah, they didn't account for it. What they did is is the guy, whoever whoever they had that was supposed to be looking at refraction, looked at the left to right measurements, not the vertical measurements. Obviously, this guy didn't know much about how to... And fine, people don't get this, but he didn't know much about how to apply the... the uh, coefficient of refraction in uh, measurements over water like that so they actually it, it was kind of silly they they just did a left a single left to right one side one temperature on the left one temperature on their right they used the modified edlin calculation and and oh. got the in the index of refraction between those two they did not calculate the coefficient of refraction which is what they should have done All so, right. do you have any examples, like any pictures where a laser Dude. is shown up in water completely level and the laser actually bends down into the water? Down into the water? I mean, you can you can look at, there's plenty in, in uh, sugar sugar tanks, if you want to look at those. No, I'm talking about over, like a light leveled over clear water and the curve, and the refraction is so great that it actually causes... It to refract more than the curvature of the Earth, the Earth. Therefore, it has to go down into the water at some yeah. point. Oh, yeah, it, uh, the condition. At any time, any time that you have somebody on the other side of a lake, and you look and you see the water, the uh, laser light reflecting off the water, that's what you're seeing. The light is being caused to bend down, and so you're seeing it off the water, and that's reflecting back up from the water. Yeah, I guess I'm, I'm saying I'd like to see that because I haven't seen that actually. Oh, well, uh, as as Michael J. Smith brought up, the FE core um, Lake Ballatin shows that. Okay. You can see in their pictures, you can see the lasers bouncing off the lake. Yeah, I'm looking it up. Yeah, so 
If, so, now, they were trying, and they didn't quite get this. They were trying. They wanted to have a specific yeah. dot on the other side. They wanted to have it hit a, like, a. they had a big target set up, and they wanted to see a dot. But they couldn't get the dot um, from very far because they couldn't collimate the laser very well. So the laser was right. spreading out, too. So they basically had to bend the aim the light down towards the water and flicker it off the water, and that's what they saw on the other side. No, no, they don't oh. need to bend it down. The the refraction causes that to happen. But and if the, the laser it, spreading out in all directions, then it would obviously go down into the water, even if the laser yeah. was left center. I uh, sorry, you so were maybe, cutting out. Can you say that again? Yeah, I just said that the if the laser was spreading out, because you're saying uh, whatever cut the laser itself was spreading out, it would be like a conal shape. And therefore, even if the laser was completely level to start with, it would obviously, as it spreads out, the, the, the light at the bottom is eventually going to reach the water. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so how, do they know, how, how do they know that they were actually seeing the source of the light the, instead of it just flickering off the water? Well, I mean, you're, you're receiving the photons but, no matter what, but be, yeah. Exactly. A great question. They didn't control for that. So, and, and all of the other lasers across lakes aren't as well controlled as this one. These people, they actually measured the vertical temperature gradient. And there's, a, there's another one in, I think, Brighton done by the, the, the guy that calls himself a doctor, John D. He's clear. He's definitely not a doctor because um, he says he has a degree in optics and yet he doesn't ever do anything with optics but anyway he he also in that one they they measured the vertical temperature gradient and had this exact same thing they had within about a meter they had a, a one degree celsius change instead of 10 meters so a drastic uh coefficient of refraction there all of the other measurements i've ever not measured the observations across lakes with lasers they never include any measurements of the vertical temperature gradient they typically do it at night after a warm day, which is the time when the, the refraction is maximized. And I can show empirical measurements of uh, refraction in uh, in well-controlled experiments. So let me let me show you. I'll send a couple here. You know, I don't know anything about refraction, but it seems counterintuitive that the world is moving right now. Uh, according to my senses, uh, it, it seems to be stationary. Seems like you're trying to change the subject. Yep. <laughs> no, I'm just just saying, you know, but go ahead with the refraction. Yeah. Well, you're saying at nighttime temperature is low. That's when refraction is greater. I would think it would be the opposite, like during a warm, like a warm day with a um, with the, the sun bearing down and, and creating a lot of heat in, in the atmosphere, I would think that would cause more refraction, not at nighttime. Uh, well, so during the day when it's sunny and, and the sun is out hitting water, especially that causes some very chaotic conditions, makes it extremely difficult to make any predictions, even if you do have measurements near the water because, or sorry, near the shore, because you don't know the, the, the conditions out in the middle of the water. So those those types of observations are difficult to do and get any confirmation and any solid um, conclusions from. So better to choose uh, environments and conditions that are not so chaotic and a lot more predictable. So, all right, I put in I put in a, a link that is it's in German and I have I had somebody translate it for me, but that shows the um, measurements of different times, different uh, day conditions. So a warm day and and sunny, and then the coefficient of refraction spikes shortly after sunset versus an overcast day where the temperature was very consistent. That's the best time is, is an overcast day and you don't have a lot of variation. Uh, even better if you can get away from water because water is a, a large, um, has a coefficient of, of heat. So it changes temperature slower than the air. Frank Burns says the real debate here should be over MC Tunes age. Look at that flawless youthful skin. Stop it, Frank Burns. He's something that's a little gets a little little creepy sometimes. But all right. Um 
Uh, anything? Um, I'm definitely creeped out. Yep, it's a it's a <laughs> bit much, a bit much there. What I would like to see is uh, maybe that maybe out on on a salt flat or just um, any kind of area where you can you can be absolutely okay. sure of your elevation on either side. And I, I mean, like down to the micron, and just see if you can get like light through air to refract over something with a known height so to prove that you can make the light through air refract greater than the earth's curvature uh, well I, I i put in i put in a link to that uh that study where they it's a well-controlled study where they know the elevations are very well and they, they took account of the different uh, temperature um conditions so look at that one that that's a good spot to start like and I said, it's, I, but I, it's in German, and the, there's a lot of refraction that um, experimentation and uh, that's been done in German because Gauss was one of the early guys to do a lot of work on that, and he's German, so there's history there. People are wondering on on my on my uh, live chat are wondering where where they are. Where I am, this is the twenty four seven Tartaria Cosmology Discord server. The link is in the description if you want to jump on that server and um, be in there. Because I, I I won't be in there all night, but you can. You you could be there twenty four seven because there's, you know, enjoy it. So I gotta ask this: I if if light can going through air can um, refract vertically over a temperature gradient. Yeah. Um, and the, the the temperature gradient, like in an area, isn't spread out evenly. Then yeah. couldn't light couldn't light reflect horizontally as well? If it if uh, you got to the end of a pocket of heat, basically, there there are a few studies on horizontal light uh, refraction. Um, specifically, there was one that was uh, in in a um, a, a canyon. And some of the points that they were doing were near the walls of the canyon. And of course, the air versus the wall, the wall would be rock. And so the temperature of the rock was less. So um, that did cause refraction near the, you know, the line of sights that went near a rock. And they actually quantified that. I don't, I don't have that particular study on hand. But for the most part, though, part, though. left to right uh, refraction is, is minimized. And if you, um, if you take, and if you're doing like, you know, surveying, they'll just, they'll take multiple measurements over time because the, the left to right tends to be affected by wind and other things like that and very temporal. So they'll take multiple measurements and average them together. Yeah. Seems like the refraction being, um, sorry, I'm just a second. It seems like, like, like anytime, like I'm seeing a visual of refraction, it's it's going through water, and obviously there's water in the air um, through humidity, and based on the temperature of that humidity, that's the that's the core principle of of what you would base refraction on through the air. Actually, um, when you when you look at the the modified Edlin uh, formula as well as the Cauchy formula, and there's a few others, um, the the primary. Uh, cause of a change of index of refraction is temperature in the lower atmosphere. Um, humidity is, I think, the fourth most, uh, the fourth significant one. And, and humidity actually does the opposite of what most people think it does. Increased humidity in the air reduces refraction because uh, the, the molecular mass of, of uh, hydrogen dioxide, sorry, dihydrogen monoxide is, is less than the molecular mass of O2 or N2. So it's so, and, and the, the 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 refraction is about the speed of light through a medium. So when it goes slower, it's it's refracting more. So when there's less density into it, which is a lower molecular mass, then it's gonna go uh -huh. a little bit faster. So what we need to do is test on a on a, a very humid day. Where I was always thinking, you would not you would want to reduce humidity as much as possible. 
actually increasing humidity will will decrease refraction but when you you get other things that happen if you if you do like if you do it over water that's really hot you have other things going on like the heat coming off the water right 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 well it's just so many feet up yeah and it's certainly better to get away from the surface because the surface is is the most unpredictable and chaotic area. So when Gauss did his measurements, he was in a in a tower and he had some some sort of a tall structure, and he was viewing across a, a I think a little bit of a valley to another structure where he he was doing these um, different measurements across there. So it was away from the water and that or not the water, the surface of of the uh, the ground there. Right. Right. So, all right. I don't know. I I can I've done a lot of <laughs> research on um refraction. So, I can talk about it a lot, but it, I think it it might get a little old for some people. <laughs> yeah. I can tell yeah. you know a lot about refraction, man. All right. Anyone else have any questions for me? How about Hammer? Hammer's here. You know that last time you were here for the debate between 3DP and Hammer, those yep. clips have been floating around a lot in this server for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> I know 3, 3DP think, was on, on my server the other day trying to trying to supply his wares. <laughs> well, hey, I got a question for you, okay? Okay. Check this out. Since uh, the world doesn't appear to be moving to me, th doesn't that really mean the burden of proof is on you to, to prove? Because it's counterintuitive, so wouldn't you have to convince me that the world is moving? No, Why I, do you I, think I, you should see the movement? Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I think it's intuitive to me that the Earth is rotating because I see counter counter rotating celestial poles. Well, just so, because the sky's moving doesn't mean the ground's moving. I, I, you you yeah. said, isn't it just just because your intuitive version of of the world that therefore you're the one that you know so, somehow I need the burden. I'm saying. I have my intuitive version of the world that thinks that the earth is rotating and spherical. Therefore, right? What that means is that at, at, is, is nobody, nobody coming into a topic automatically has the no burden of proof, right? You, if you really are honest, you come into it and nobody has anything. But if you do look at how Lincoln Douglas debates are done, Lincoln Douglas debates or formal debates, you know, tend to be done in high school and, um college and in in those types of debates the person that is standing against the the generally accepted position is the one that has the burden i i'm fine to not have that position to, to both of us come in at oh, interesting, interesting. I, I sorry i didn't quite hear what you said but oh i just said that's interesting i didn't know that about debates oh, thank okay. thank you yeah and and like I said, I I don't think that I need to come into that where where I'm the one that has nothing to to prove because it's already been done, right? I, I'm happy to enter into this where we're both on the same ground, right? Well, I appreciate, I respect that, but I'm just saying though, it seems counterintuitive to me to to, to say the world is moving, is spinning and stuff, moving around the sun and and moving around. As a, a galactic core, and that that's moving away from the Big Bang. I don't feel or notice any of that. I don't yeah. see any of that but, happening, other than Smurf, on television. But, it's, it's, it's Smurf, have you ever been? Have you ever been on a on a plane uh, on a flight? Oh, I mean, one, plenty of times. Yeah. Okay. Do you really feel like you're moving at 550 miles an hour, 600 miles an hour? Yeah. I mean, really, do I you do. feel like you're moving that fast? Nah, not really. No. That's because there's no mechanism in your body that detects your speed, only acceleration. Your, your body doesn't that. care how fast it's moving. I didn't think about that. That's rather interesting. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sorry. I like, I I like Smurf. About that before. Smurf's a good guy. Uh, I'm sorry not to like him, I gotta say. I see Montreal. <laughs> how you doing? <laughs> Going I on, told man. you he was a flat earth yeah, liability. Dude, I thought he was a Glober for all this whole time. Yeah. Someone gave me the flat earth tag yeah. by mistake. You know, I, I'm not I, 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 I,
Smurf, I, I, I mean this nicely. I heard the backfire from those two or three brain cells turning on at, at the end of that statement. It was an <laughs> awesome noise to hear. Okay, my kids are quiet for a minute. You, hey, you said counter rotating poles. Does that mean the globe rotates two different directions? The bottom no, no. rotates one way, no, the top no. the other? No, that's not what it means. Well, I was asking, yeah. How can you have a counter rotating globe? Is it an apparent view? Or does it appear that way? Yeah, yeah. So, so as uh, as Euclid uh, wrote about uh, thousands of years ago, uh, the the uh, the celestial poles are are uh, an evidence for the Earth being a rotating sphere, or uh, it, for them something rotating. It could be it could in in just if you just look at that one thing, it could be the stars rotating. Oh, but it could I, be. I, I so brought it up. I brought so it's it up not only really because exclusive to your to a globe model. No, it it it, it also works. Uh, just that one observation in isolation works for the geocentric globe model as well, like Robert Sungenis talks about. Not, is it Robert? <laughs> yeah, when you're facing north, you see north, and when you're facing south, you see south. But they appear to move two yes. different ways. Robert Robert Sengenis. Yeah, what well, one goes clockwise, the other goes counterclockwise. If the if the Earth were flat with with a, a firmament over the top, the center would be moving one direction, uh, and and the mm -hmm. uh, exterior would be moving laterally. There wouldn't be a, a another I, I don't, another celestial I don't know. pole. I would say they all move east to west, and it would be whichever direction you view it from. Yeah, yeah be the but, same but way. It, it would be. Yep, it'd be I, laterally moving when you look away from the center, and you'd see circles toward. Actually, you'd see ellipses when you look to the center. But because, I, I, because well, that's not what we see, though. I apologize for the video sounds in the background. I got yeah, you're hot mic am like crazy. <laughs> hey, it, hey, can I explain this really in simple terms? Sure, because it's a lot. It's, it's it's a lot simpler than that. Um, who am I? Who was that? Michael. That was so Michael J. If you, if you, Fox. Yeah, Michael J. Smith. Michael, if you stand if you stand in one spot and spin around and you look down at your feet, you're going to see the ground rotating, and then if you look up, you're going to see this the whatever's above you rotating as well. So you are the sphere rotating, and then if you look out straight out, you're going to see everything kind of moving in a straight line. Around you. Yeah, I don't ever see the ground rotating, but nice try, guy. No, no it's, the sky. Analogy, it's the sky. It's you, the sky. You kind of you kind of butcher that, to be honest. The the better analogy is just in your room with the camera. Have the yeah, camera right. pointed at the ceiling, and you rotate. I've heard all like, this, guys. I promise I'll meet, I'll meet a real woman someday. I promise. <laughs> Relax. We're That's exactly what I said. Well, I know, but listen. We, what you have to explain is, is that when when room? you have the camera facing. When you have the camera facing the ceiling versus at the floor, your body is rotating the same direction. When you review the footage, you're going to have counter rotations to each other. That's the point, is that you have an object that's rotating, you're looking in opposite directions, and you're getting this opposite rotation. It perfectly matches what we see in reality. The implication of a flat Earth would be that you're on a, let's say, a record on a jukebox or something. No matter where you are on that record, you're all looking in the same direction. There is no mechanism to give you different rotations if you're all looking in the same direction. Yeah, if you are. But if you turn around and look the other if from one way it goes right to left, you turn around and face the other way, it goes left to right. It's not exclusive to your model. No, no uh, but, it, okay, so the, the in desperation. The analogy I, I, I've explained, to just desperately your eyes deny, are the camera, right? Sorry. To, to just desperately deny such an obvious thing, is it really gives them the stink of desperation, doesn't it? The sky will be the stars as well. And you're rotating, and you look at both of those, and they both look like they're moving in different directions. One's moving clockwise, moving, moving counterclockwise. Yeah, and it has to be. It has to do with the direction from which you view them. Yeah, I, I totally get that. You're trying to tell me what I've already stated. Right. These these rotations are centered around a pole as well. So even if you're on a flat Earth with this these movements, and you turn around. <laughs> And you look. Yeah. It's, it's, there would be no, an arbitrary line. Uh, yeah, but there, yeah. there would be it. no south. There would be the southern it. rotation in the flat earth. Oh, you can see a pole. Yeah, but yeah, there you see, a, you see there a center is, of rotation. There is no southern rotation. You see right? a you yeah, see a center of rotation. You, got, in the south. you do see oh, it due yeah. to perspective, right? Looking south from the south, sure, but it doesn't mean there's an actual southern rotation on flat earth. 
But you can see it ro- You can see the stars rotating and do a time lapse, and it thinks you camera south. You yeah, can see a rotation. But every person in the south on flat Earth sees that at counter rotation at a different point, right? It's just a, a, it's a aspect of human perspective on a grand scale. It's yes. the same reason why you and see anti crepuscular rays. Cameras cameras see it too, not just humans. And, right. Well, that's how the only time you'd ever see it is time lapse, right? Yeah. And and so Shane, what direction would that be on flat Earth? What direction would that be? Dude, I know you don't get directions on Flat Earth, so I'm not even going to try again, but every direction away from the center is south on Flat Earth. It's not a, a line, right? At least in west of circles, so... On, on that note, just a basic question, if, if that's your premise, the implication would be that South America and Australia are looking, both looking south, but they have their back to- backs towards each other, right? Would you agree? No, that's only because of that silly diagram where they were looking towards the center. They should be looking out, right? But right, the because you can't make a map. Do you guys the, have a model have. or any kind the of map where the world really looks like? Yeah, I'm, got everyone I'm in the, yeah, well, on the, the AE map on their, on their own horizon. Let's on the try AE to map, they, they look out, they look opposite people. each other, right? Yeah, yeah that's they do. That was that was the point. Yeah, their their backs are faced towards each other. So yet they yet they see the same thing. Right, and that's that's the exact point they they, mo- they might both be facing south on a flat earth but their backs are are towards each other looking yeah. opposite of each other yet seeing the exact same thing that's the point yeah all right well uh and, and, and none of the flat earth none of you guys can visualize how this would work on a globe no, it works perfectly on a globe, right? Well, to my mind, right? You it have does. one rotating celestial sphere outside you, and then you look up where it's rotating counterclockwise. You go to the bottom of the ball, look down, it's clockwise. It's the opposite. It makes and you know sense. what, Shane? And you know what, Shane? That's why I like you because you're honest about that. I like that. At least you acknowledge that that actually does work on a globe. A lot of people on flat Earth because we have this list, right? Things that work perfect on both models if you know enough, and things that only work on one and one or the other. And I had to put star trails in both. But a lot of people fought me on that and go, no, no, it's impossible on a globe. And I was like, okay, how? Mm. how which, um, which direction is down? To the bottom. Nice, uh, SC Montreal towards... wants to change the subject. <laughs> I'm down with that. Go for it, man. Get him. <laughs> toward the center of the globe. Toward the center of the globe? That's, oh, that's down the rabbit hole. Right Yes. No, if you yeah, want an answer, let's... hold on. If you want an answer that works for both models at the same time, the answer is toward the surface of the Earth. Let's go with that one. So let's wow. go with what Toon what Toon let's... said: the the, the let's... center of the Earth, right? Yes. Yeah. Let's give Toon and Effie Montreal the floor, please. But I don't want the floor. I just want to ask a question. I mean, all right. Before. Well, good. You you got an answer. Okay, uh, Tune, so the direction is down, right? We, you have a downward vector. Yeah. So you, you continue going down. How, how far is down? How far? Well, until you get to the center. I said it's towards the center. So once you get right. to the center, then, then you're down. Yeah. What happens then? What do you mean? Well, if you continue in, that, in the same vector... Oh, what now we're happened? moving. We're moving. Okay, so yeah, if, if you're... Well, we were always you, moving. We started from the, the no, top. You, you started we with what center. direction is down. You didn't say that we were moving that way. Okay, so so okay. you want to dig, you wanna dig a Fair hole enough. straight through the center of the Earth? Yeah. And move... Yeah, yeah okay. So you, yeah, you, you move once you get to, towards the center, and you go past the center, then down is the other, other direction. Yep. So down becomes up. No, it's still down. But but relative to the other position, it's not the same. How does that work? It's still down. I, I if you so- don't, and this isn't that complicated. I mean, that it, it's really not that complicated. So if I don't know if you're pretending to not understand it or if you really don't understand it, but it's not that hard. I I, I don't know why it's a challenge for you. It's it's, the not, it's not a challenge. It just sounds weird. You're saying that down continues in the same vector but it doesn't become up it's it Here, here's, here's a perfect analogy there there's tree branches that are above you then you're moving up now you now you're above the tree branches which direction are they now is that the same analogy 
Yes, you have a point of reference. The branches, they were, they were up. Now you're moving. You moved up so far that now you're above them. Now what direction would you call the branches to you? Ooh. According to McToon, you're still calling it above it's you. Still up. It's still yeah, up. Yeah, exactly. It's still up. No. 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 Yeah. Well, why strawman me? McToon, it's still up. Well, why do you have to strawman me? Why would you do that? This is perfect. Do, do you have to be dishonest? Is, is it built That's into your they're... psyche to be dishonest? Is that it? Do you think that you think that you, that you, think said, that you wish the earth into being flat by being dishonest? Why don't you just be honest instead? You, you can't you do that by poisoning you poisoning you you gotta come from love. you got to come from a stance of superiority, McToon. Don't don't get flustered now. We can see those feathers. Yeah. Calm down. Ready? What was no. that hammer? You're not being fair to McToon here. Now, obviously, on a globe. That uh, it's not a vector. That down is not a vector. Down is a specific point, a specific location. Only on a flat Earth would down be a, an infinite vector downward from the surface. Like, come on, be fair, but simple geometry. Well, I mean, so right, down I'm, is everywhere. Then down is everywhere in your no. model. No, no it's here, a vector. Here's, here's it's, all right, it's, all right, all right. It's vector. between. Hey, shh, shh, shh. it's between myself and Essie here for a minute. Essie on so a, a similar question on the flat Earth map. The AE map. I don't know which one you prefer, but I I suspect if you had a Gleason map pillow, you'd hug it every night. But anyway, if you went due north from your location and you continued past the North Pole on Flat Earth, and then you're on the other side of the North Pole and you kept going the same direction, would you still be going north? I don't claim a shape of Earth. I, and I'm I don't, just asking and I don't on, know, the a, on the AE know map. Where. On the I never AE map, that. I can't answer can, that can question. you not? You can't even. You can't even put into your put your hat and your thinking cap on and think. Well, okay, if we go north on the AE map, cross the North Pole, and continue in the same direction, are we still going north? How about you, you stop strawmanning everybody with a map? You I never. Uh, yeah, I never claimed that. Why are you I didn't. I like didn't that? put that on you. I said let's just use the AE map for an example. How about that? No, no, so you are you, are you scared? You're scared you're of the gonna, down question, right? No, I, I'm, I'm giving you an analogy. Here. I'm giving you an analogy here. Okay, so take the AE map, go straight north, past the North Pole, keep going the same direction. Are you still going north? Why are you strawmanning? I never claimed the map. I didn't no, claim the map. Why, why are you asking let me, me Let me reiterate. Let me reiterate my claim. position. Hold on. I, I, let me reiterate my position again. Let's take the AE map. I don't know or care if it's your particular preference, but let's just take it for a second and put our thinking caps on and, and think about the that particular claim that many flat earthers still do claim. Go due north. Cross the North Pole. Continue you want the same to direction. The question. You want to skirt the question. I'm, I'm giving you an down. analogy so that you can think about this. Okay, so go past the North Pole. Keep going in the same direction. Are you still going north? As an outside observer, Essie, I'd say yes. It's fair to say he wants to skirt the question. <laughs> yeah, of course he wants to skirt the <laughs> question. Notice how when you start talking about flat Earth, all of a sudden it comes. Yeah, they never stronger. want to talk about flat Earth. The last thing they want to talk about <laughs> is flat Earth. <laughs> I get when it. Then, Every single time earth. flat earth is tested, it fails. That's why they never want to touch it. Hey, Jason, can you, hey, whoa, whoa, can you whoa, whoa, ask whoa. me the question? I'm, I'll I'm ask hey, Can you ask me the question? BioDuel, if you took the AE map, I know that's not maybe your map, but let's imagine for a second that you put yourself on the AE map. Go due north. Cross the North Pole. Keep going in the same direction. Are you still going north? Uh, no, we, we flipped around and I've continued and now I'm going south. Thank you. There you go. On that map. Thanks, buddy. That's just geometry. It's not hard. Good job. Nice skirting of the question. So you're going down now. You're going in the vector yeah. down in your yes. mythical ball. Yes. You reach the center, right, Toon? Yeah, you keep going. Yep. Keep you going. You keep then, going. Yep. And then what happens? And then, and then the down. direction of down is now the opposite of what it used to be, just like on the example I gave with BioDuel that he un understood immediately. So down became up. Did. Right? So north became south. Yeah, I mean, that the, because you still go in the same direction. That's just you geometry. Say it, huh? you, is this you can't geometry? Say it, right? Is this you geometry can't beyond you, Essie Montreal? Are you really that difficult? Is it hard for you to understand? Do, this do is, me, you can't this bring is yourself seriously to say it, right? middle school geometry, and you seem confused by it. No I wonder. Know it's ridiculous. That's it what you is ridiculous say. that down you don't understand up, right? it. No, down is still down, but because you're on the other side of the center of gravity. Now down is the other direction. This is not so which difficult. Is, which is this, what? Which is what? Essie, this is not a challenging thought experiment. 
but for some so reason, why, why you really you struggle it, with it. Why do you Tony, struggle with why, it so much, Why can't Jesse? you say it, bro? Why can't I you say it? I just said it. Why is it so hard for you? I, that's, we're on to the next thing here. I'm asking, why do you struggle with this simple topic so much? I'm not it's struggling not, at all. It's <laughs> not that hard. It's not, that down hard. Is up. it's not actually that hard. But you haven't said it yet. You didn't say that down becomes up in your No, model. it doesn't. No, on the other side of the center you of gravity, down is a different it. vector. You can't say it. Why would I say it? It's not right. It. Would you, uh, with uh, McTune? You with can't it, say it. Hold on. Go ahead, Smurf. I've got a, after you're done, though, I've got a globe on globe question for McTune. All right. I need more tune shine here. Have a zip of your tab, McTune. Sorry, Smurf, Smurf, I think it was Smurf, right? Somebody said Smurf was going to say something. Oh, I was just joking that you saying you can't say it. No, I wouldn't say something that I disagree with. You said you won't say that down is up. Yeah, down is not up. Down is always down. Down is always down. Except until until it uh, until it's up. Well, yeah, when you're on the yeah, other yeah, side yeah, of the center of gravity, it's a different, different direction. Well, it, 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 I don't feel like the down thing with with the globe model. I don't feel like the down question is really that straightforward because on the globe the, the, the down direction is generated by the mass of the earth but yeah. the earth is huge and as you move toward the center of the earth you're not moving toward like a finite point that says here is where the force of gravity comes from it's the whole mass of the earth so as you get closer to the center I feel like you'd start to things would start to get really weird because now you've got all the mass on your sides and even yeah. behind you at this point yeah, you, you have, start to have go mass deep above enough. you. Like like Down if you get people. if you were to get to the center point of the Earth, I feel like you'd what would happen to you? Would you would you get ripped apart in all directions from getting so, I don't know. Make something up if people will believe it. Listen, hey, so with a, with a circumference of twenty five thousand miles, <laughs> just hand so wave that away. Just, you didn't yeah, want to talk about that. I can I mean, he spent all that time developing the question, and you just jump in. I can definitely answer that question. Oh, good. Let's um, hear it. All right. If you were at the center of the Earth in a capsule, in other words, a sealed capsule inside that oh, capsule. Gosh. You would bounce around inside that capsule in all directions. No, no, you wouldn't. And, until until no, until don't. you hit a until you hit a point where you were equally pulled on all directions, and that's when you would stop moving. But a, a minute you were released inside that capsule, you'd start bouncing around until you hit that equilibrium where all gravitational forces are equal on all in all sides, pulling at all parts of your body at the same time. Oh my but god. Thanks. But the, but Demonstrate the that. so big and you are so small, I feel like there would be such a huge what's the word I'm looking for? Like a like a gray area. Like for all intents and purposes, there is the same amount of mass in all directions. You know wow. what I mean? Like I have a question about big the enough capsule for you to move around in. I mean I have not, a question not, about the earth not being a big. Container. Big, big, big Earth question. Ready? Okay, so twenty-five thousand miles circumference, right? At what height, when we keep going up towards "quote unquote" space, should we start to see curvature? It depends on the perception of your equipment. Do, do, no, do just you what mean, height? Wait, just just what height? Yes, okay. it's almost like a yes or no question. Just yeah. give me a number. Don't talk. We're trying to have an intellectual, two, intellectual two, conversation. Two hundred and fifty oh, miles. He doesn't. He doesn't want the intellectual oh, conversation. I'm trying, trying to. I'm do trying real. to. Two hundred and fifty miles. Answer. It, it, the to see real curvature stays on curvature top. When do I see it? Define it. Guys. You start seeing it around 100 miles, and you'll see it at 250 miles completely. And then when you get up to about 400 miles, you'll see the actual curvature. There's awesome. pictures from Gemini where they went up to 700 No, no, miles. you weren't on Gemini. Go ahead and show us when you got those numbers. Go ahead. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ. I, I asked for evidence. That's He's where like, I got the numbers sucks. from. from you got to remember, life. he only Jesus allows Christ. things that you personally did yourself unless he has evidence. Then he can definitely oh, cite things I that he see. didn't do himself. That's sorry. the double I'm standard of evidence. I have standard have evidence. Let's go ahead. So, Let's go ahead. so do you know at what height you'll see the curvature? You don't have you, you can't distract me. Audience doesn't buy this anymore. You can't distract so. you, huh? Okay. Do you mean left to right curvature? Any curvature at all, yes, okay. left to right, right, front to back, whatever you got. Yeah, well, you can see front to back at, at the surface. <laughs> no, um, that's what uh, I'm asking. I'm asking since we can't see front no, to back. You can, you right, can see right. front to back. You can't, 
At the service. I think you, I think you can. think we can. Yes. I think that you're paid to say that we can, but no one can find it, bro. It's, it's not hard. You bottom up you obstruction. Cannot. Yeah, bottom up obstruction is easy to easy to see. So that's no, that's the about, front to back. Well, well, that's high. the front to back Brother, effective high. curve. Yeah, I but, wasn't talking about obstruction. I'm talking about how high do I have to be before I start seeing your glow? Yeah. So so then I then I'm clarifying. You do you mean left to right? And then you said lots of this this sure, this this. Sure. this. Yeah, you sure. Mean, left to right. Where's the left just to right? Left to right. Okay. At at forty thousand, fifty thousand, you could see it with your eyes. Really? Because I was up to sixty thousand at nineteen years old in the Concord. I didn't see it, and that was twice. Oh, so well, try again. Wait, wait, did you look out the Concord windows? Windows in the Concord? Great memory. So. You looked out on the small windows in the Concord, and you couldn't see any curvature. No, I could barely see anything, but yeah, no curvature. Yeah, yeah. I've been on the Concord. Yeah, it's, it's yeah listen, not a listen. Way. I don't care about really airplane window windows. Here. Listen, you so can't go on the airplane. I want to know how wait, high wait, your you, eyes were. Hold you on. specifically I mentioned I Concord were, through a window, this. and then you said you don't care about Concord windows. Could you make it no, up your mind? I want, to know, I want to know when with your eyeballs, not through a window, you saw the curvature of the Earth. Uh, That's what here, I want. Here's the problem. You, you have dual standard of evidence here. You said that you saw you went in the Concord, and then when somebody else said that they it went in the Concord, anything. The theirs Concord doesn't, doesn't matter. Anything one way or the other. He so then why did you bring up Concord? Because I was going against what, he said, what you said about forty fifty. I said no. I've been up to sixty. Try again. Okay, but but you said through a window doesn't matter. So your observations through a window don't matter, right? Your, no your window standards. observations matter. So your yeah, standard you evidence. Say. So why did you bring up Concord? I'm asking where yeah. you saw the curvature. You can't distract like this, dude. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. So, sorry. You know. Well, I went up forty five thousand feet. I saw curvature in a private well, jet. There, that's there your you opinion. And there you go. <laughs> I, saw, I saw curvature staying on the beach. Wow. <laughs> oh, bro. Oh, bro. Yeah. You, wanted, you wanted our own personal experience and you wanted to make sure it was us so i mean you know and that's if you're being honest god bless you but you're i mean it's not reality but if you're being honest that's fine would you like a picture he, he won't take pictures he, 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 he will reject all pictures curvature. he sure, rejects all pictures that, that pictures. contradict his pre-selected yeah, conclusion pictures, pictures, pictures you, i took myself. standard flurf you do the Dude, same thing. See the picture. Go ahead. If it goes against the globe narrative, you do the same thing, brother. Sorry. N no, sorry. Oh, no. Yes, oh, here, 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 I'll put. I'll put a picture of curvature curve and an arc as there it goes go. up over. Go ahead. As it deny. Well, here come the pictures. Time to here deny. Here the pictures that nobody asked for. You there fucking you idiot. Time to deny. Go ahead. Deny it. Deny Jeez. what? It's just there a picture. There it is. Oh, there it is. Yep. The oh, it's just a picture. It doesn't count. Yep. Well, does it? Looks pretty flat. Okay, to apparently, me. to you, it, it doesn't. It yeah, like and, and, and that's got curve in it. There. Here's another one. Speaking oh, of the Concord, cool there you go from the Concord. Supposedly, you bet. wait. You bet. Is that in the Concord yeah. or from the Concord? Is there another Concord flying next? Oh. To you? What took the picture? That that was that one was <laughs> taken <laughs> from from a jet oh, near the, the Concord. Huh. Wait a sec. I thought that was taken from the Concord. Are you okay? No, that the one of the Concord was taken from a plane next to. Are you pushing? I don't know why that's hard for you to get. It's not complicated. Big tune, he asked you a question. Are you full of shit or not? No. So that is a... I don't know why it's hard for you to understand that that's a picture of the Concorde taken from a plane near the Concorde. That's great. You still haven't answered my question. At what height does a human being see the curvature I, of the Earth? I already answered you. I said 45,000 to 50. Okay. That's left to right. Now, yeah. if you want to see front and back, you can see that from the, from the, from the shore. Yes, from the beach. Yeah, okay. So, so then when I went up, just like you guys, and tops of mountains and stuff too, I, 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 when it, when I don't see curvature with my naked eye, it's because it's curved. Oh, but you yeah, haven't been up there. We, we, we kind of have to take your word for it because you don't have evidence ditto. of what you're saying. Ditto, ditto, bud. I, so no, now, I just posted my. Evidence. Would you like more? I have evidence, dude. It's Can computer you? garbage. You, that's not evidence of doing something in the real world. No, 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 no. no, no. This is pictures I've taken myself. Ooh. No, he, he rejects yeah, them now. Been... He used to there. think that yeah. that was just a little bit ago that was acceptable. Now it's not acceptable. Right, right. When did so I we're gonna have to take that? The when, when did you I say you wanted to come home? How old were you when you were in the Concord? How old were you? 19. You take any but, pictures? Of, of yeah, the I don't know what the pictures are. Yeah, I took a couple pictures. It was not the greatest camera situation. Uh, disposable. Right. Can, you, can you present oh, them? I... 
I didn't take. I mean, let me let me try okay. to find him, bro. It doesn't matter. If you, listen, if you don't believe me, that's okay. See, I you don't have to believe me. The Earth is flat, regardless of what you believe, dude. No, you just, that's just your mantra. That's just a mantra. Where's your evidence? Yeah, you have to say that it's just a mantra, so the audience Where's thinks it's a your weak evidence when it's actually. Where's reality. your evidence? Bring your evidence. So w where can I see the curvature? Once I already again? answered it. Where's your evidence? Where's your evidence of the forty-five thousand foot curvature? I, I, Go. I'll po all right. I'll post the picture again, you, 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 so you can deny it. Okay. Not making any claims about where I could or couldn't see it, dude. You right. are there. It is right there. There you go. There's a picture. So that now that evidence. I have satisfied your, well, what what would you accept you to, as evidence? You have to say that you listen. You have to what say that you satisfied you accept, it, but you haven't. Hold on. Tell, so tell me what you would accept. Nothing evidence. over the internet. That's what I'm trying to get the audience to see. It's moot and rhetorical. There is no oh, earth curve. So here. why we are would just you ask? At you. Why would you ask what for you evidence for? if because everything is auto rejected? You try. I want to watch you rise yeah. and shake in front of me, so, trying to so find the answer. So listen to this: when you, you watched you Eric Dubay's two hundred proof video, and all of those videos and pictures convinced you, and now you're saying that none of that is acceptable evidence, shouldn't you undo all of the beliefs that you have listen, because you know, of that? I didn't see two hundred proofs until a couple years ago. Sure, Sorry, sure, dude. Yeah, yeah, whatever. So now, so with all that. evidence <laughs> is auto rejected by you. And then, and then he distracts to what Eric Dubay. I never brought the motherfucker up in the first place. Why you got to do that, bro? Sure, sure. Why can't you stay on topic? Sure, of course, of course you didn't. So you you ought to reject oh, all evidence. So you you since you have no evidence and will accept no evidence, you don't have a position on the shape of the earth, right? I come here to make fun of you. Yeah. Okay. So you're not you don't have a position for the shape of the earth. No. Nope. Okay. Then you can go away. Thank you. Anybody else want to talk Please. about the shape of the earth? Well, look, I'm not going to go away. Oops. Would somebody like to talk about the oh. shape of the earth? I've got a I'm lot of How about Hammer? Anyone? Can we give Hammer him a minute? You guys already had a debate. Maybe you got some follow ups and some clips. Here comes the Hammer. I've been what? up there many times, 30,000 feet. I've never did seen the. Did he really time. just leave? <laughs> okay. Hey, look, it's oh, voice muffin. Did Hammer dip? If there, well, if well there was, no Hammer then. I have a question. It's, it's not it's Hammer real. time. If there was oh. some way that you guys could observe, <laughs> hey, how question. many times did you hammer that sock, bro? Slippery, <laughs> slippery. Okay, I, I have on. a question. Like I have yeah. a very simple question. Well, that's fine, if, but I have a is, question. That's well, fine. There he is. Oh, he's question. back. Hey, what's up, dude? All right, let's hear it. So I guess I'll so you make some interesting claims there. Uh, first of all, you're talking about flat earthers' standards of evidence. Yeah, the dual standard of evidence, yeah. So when Globers are talking about uh, no flat earther has ever done celestial navigation, that's not the same thing? I've never or, seen any... Uh, I've never no seen any flat, flat earther. earther... I've never seen any... Let's, let's talk about that. I've never seen any flat earther show how celestial navigation is done using just flat earth. I've never seen it. Well, you just got done uh, haranguing us about how we won't accept anything that's not done by you personally, but then you project that same argument back onto us. No, not at all. Not at all. No, no. I, and I, just then, just the principles of celestial navigation could be talked about without the person having experience on it. Is what you're saying? Absolutely, that's fine. Oh, uh, okay. I've but I've never seen anybody There's actually. There's a point there for me. I've okay. never seen anybody actually explain the process how, of how to do celestial navigation using flat Earth only. Well, Ruhif explains it all the time, and the way that he explains it, he even admits that he does it a non-traditional way, it, meaning he does it not the way that is traditionally done Yeah. when you're doing celestial navigation. Right? Yeah, so, so when you're doing celestial navigation mm -hmm. traditionally, they, they've... There's kind of some processes that they use because it works well on a ship or a boat, right? But when you're sitting at home, you can do all sorts of stuff. You can use a, a spreadsheet. You can you, you can take all the time you want. If you're on a boat, well, you have a few pieces of paper. You have a sextant. You maybe aren't going to be using a... No, I know, mean... Before uh, recently, I mean, they didn't you have a spreadsheet. Simply, um, he's literally doing it the complete opposite of the way that they do it when they're out on the ocean. It's yeah. not a matter of, you but, know, just... But he still uses the globe. Mm -hmm. Right. Right, but he's not doing it the same way that they're doing 
Yeah. Right? But he's, he's not still doing uses... it the way that they that's fine. traditionally do it every day. Celestial navigation, right? He's using like an what I assume to be an offshoot. Yeah. You know, I have I have in my chat specific, Ni- Nicholas uh Nicholas Chaude uses a uh, spreadsheet to do it. He he derived everything from first principles as far as I know in, in a spreadsheet to do it. He didn't use any of the any of the stuff. And uh, same with uh, Professor Clive, uh, Doctor Clive Wells. He 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 derived it completely mathematically, uh, and and using using spherical you know trigonometry and got the correct answer uh, when I did the challenge back in I think April. Hey, McTune, can I ask you a couple questions, bro? Sure. Well, I got one more thing for him, if all you right. don't mind. Um, so first of all, the point was made that you don't have to have experience in something to speak about it, right? Um, yeah, I mean, you have to know about it, of course, but yeah. Yeah, have some. Yeah. I mean, it helps. There's a difference. I'm not going to say there's not a difference, right? And also, I went back and listened to the, the recording, by the way, whenever I left. And you didn't have a comeback for it. Jesse had the comeback for it. And you brought up the train right kind of like you just brought up the the being inside in an airplane and you can't move and you can't feel movement with a i don't know if it's your plant or something like somebody, somebody else somebody else was here. saying that but yeah you, you don't feel constant motion yeah so my my rebuttal to that would be just get on top of that plane and then tell me you don't feel the movement thank you sir you have a nice night Bye. Go ahead, what's it? Yeah, wind, thanks for coming by with it go okay. for it man yo my yeah, first thanks. question is um thanks a lot buddy why, uh, McTune, why are you so obsessed with Flat Earth? It's my hobby. I have a lot of fun. Ah. What a liar. Weird. All right. Uh, do you agree that relativity says that you cannot prove that the Earth is moving around the sun from the Earth nor detect it? No, I do not. Really? How do you yeah. detect the Earth moving around the sun from the Earth? Uh, there's many ways to do that. You can use parallax. Seems like you would just name yeah. one. Parallax yeah. would be a good way, yeah. Oh, par- parallax is not actually answering the question. So I'm not saying looking at the sky and assuming it. I'm saying detecting or measuring it. According to relativity, that's impossible. Well, so you say, but... Um, oh, so not. relativity says. Relativity it's, not what says re- it's not what relativity says. It literally is. It, no, it, it's not. But you go ahead and, and uh, give it a shot. All right, I'll enlighten you. See, I watched a part of your little little video with uh, Bryant. And dude, my guy, you were so wrong about everything you said. You also lied about me. I don't know. I don't watch you. I don't know if that's like your MO. But then, of course, you noticed that FTFE was getting destroyed. So you didn't finish it, um, it, it which yeah, was it funny was, it to was two watch, and a half but, hours in. So... I, I well, you noticed after yeah. DFE was getting destroyed. No, but but so do, you don't do, think do he on. got destroyed? No, I don't really. So no, he no, was not he, wrong during that debate. I, I, I no, wouldn't say debate, that he was. Had to, Winston had to, re, uh, to reassure himself that he was winning the debate. Yeah. Make sure you yeah. jump in with yeah. your cheerleading non sequitur bullshit. Right, right, I will. I will. Thank you no, for your please, profound please input. Let we are all him. now so much better off. Please let Austin and McTun go for a while, man. You so I, I so this is what happened, me. right? FTFE was arguing um, that it that relativity says that the arms did contract, but not enough for it to matter. Now you and Bryant for the first like hour of your little show were lying, and and you, actually it wasn't a lie because it wasn't intentional. You're just lost per usual. But you were saying that he was actually talking about Lorentz and the ether. He wasn't talking about relativity, but of course the whole time FTFE was talking about relativity. And was getting destroyed. And uh, the fact that you can sit here and pretend that he didn't get anything wrong kind of shows that you're being dishonest, yeah? Well, it, I would not say that he was uh, 100% accurate in everything he did. He was, there was certainly a lot of confusion because you were, you were talking about some different things and I think it was conflate, getting conflated between, between uh, Lorentz contraction in the Aether model and Lorentz's uh, application in relativity. And there was some What's confusion the between them. Well, in the in Lorentz contraction in the Aether model is that Lorentz contraction actually physically happens. That's the claim that Lorentz made. 
And Einstein rejected it because there's no electrical chemical or electrical dynamical, I believe you said, reason for that to happen. And uh, those types of things then said other other reasons as well. They they did away with that. In in relativity, Lorentz is is a, a factor that modifies things, but it doesn't actually change the length of something in your reference frame. Yeah. So I know you're you want to pretend you know what you're talking about, but so Lorentz proposed a Lorentz contraction due to the ether, right? And I said this in the debate like four times because FTFE was like incredibly lost and. You did your little sofa sophistry thing where you're like, oh, he why don't got you just get right. your point instead of patting yourself on the back? I am exposed. I know you got to pat, so, pat yourself on the back. Keep going. No, no, I'm. We just all want to hear you. you talk about how awesome you think you're you are. afraid to hear yeah, me expose you. Just jump right to your point, though. How about that? I was, I was almost there. Yeah. Yeah. So you just pause next time, it, saying right like, to oh, the what's points. it? What's it? Almost. You're scared. <laughs> what's it? Was almost right for a second. That was getting scary or whatever. But I was right the whole yeah, time were, when I said Lorenz. You were almost right. Yeah. You, you had me confused for a minute. You did. Oh, you're scared. You're scared. So I pointed out that Lorenz proposed the Lorenz contraction, and he said it was the ether that was doing it. And then Einstein took the Lorenz contraction and integrated it into relativity, but did not say it was the ether. Now, yeah. your model does claim that uh, objects physically shorten in length. That not, not you within are your in the same frame of reference as the object that shortened. Therefore, all space, including the observer themselves, also shortened. So you are not able to detect or measure it because you're in the same frame that shortened. Yeah, it, it doesn't. It doesn't shorten from your frame of reference. Where in Lorentz's uh, Aether version, it does. Again, relativity says that it did physically shrink and shorten but that since you're in that frame of reference you also shorten and so does all the space so you can't detect it yes yeah, outside your reference frame is where you need to be to see it yeah. yeah so is light a different reference frame than we are the speed of light is is light a different re wait, when you the are speed within of light. Your, yeah when you are within your reference frame light is what you see within your reference frame Right? Yeah, you so see, is like the speed of light a diff establishing a different absolute reference frame? No, within your reference frame, the speed of light is is the speed of light. It can't go faster. So is, is light relative reference frame or absolute? Within your reference frame, light cannot go faster than the speed of light. The answer is that it's the absolute, right? So in relativity, you need everything to be relative, and it, how you have to have an absolute frame for everything to be relative to. That's C, the constant speed of light. And he applied this to Michelson-Morley, the same exact mechanism, the Lorentz contraction, and that it actually shortened, the arm shortened. But you can't tell because you're in that reference frame. The only difference was he threw the ether out. Okay, he threw the ether out, and he said the reason that there was a slight friendship detected was, you know, uh, margin of error. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. so that's margin what actually happened. So Yeah, and, so, and, and, and m more recent measurements... Have shrunk that margin of error significantly by billions of times and still no drift detected within the margin of error of the instruments yeah that's cool that's a cool non sequitur to the actual point right so the point here is that you're wrong when you claim that relativity does not claim that the arm contracted in michelson morley because it quite with, literally does with, it just with the claims caveat. that you can't detect it yeah with the caveat of within your reference frame it does not Okay, so that's a non sequitur. So when I would now, of course, Bryant was super lost and he didn't know this. And I think you started to put together that Bryant was super lost, but you were also lost because relativity does claim that it contracts. It, it, it's very well known. In fact, it's disputed. Um, I talked to a physicist not too long ago. He said he doesn't believe in uh, special relativity and the claim that there's a Lorentz contraction and it's, it's oftentimes disputed in his field, right? But the point is that that is the current paradigm. It claims that things contract when in motion. So that means that it's also applied to Michelson-Morley. So in, in relativistic application, the arm did shorten and contract. You just could not tell within that same reference frame. Yeah, we're not in that reference frame. So then, according to relativity, you could never like use measurement on the Earth to detect the movement of the Earth around the sun. Duh. Uh, no, actually, that's not the case at all, Austin. That's specifically Einstein was talking about 
only Michelson Morley. He was not talking about other particular experiments. He was only talking about Michelson Morley. This is another one of your scripts that you say that is just wrong. So, so actually what he says is he's given a speech in Japan, right? And he's saying, Michelson Morley is what started him on his pursuit to eventually propose special relativity. Yeah. And since then, I've come to the conclusion that no optical experiment can detect it. But he has an additional quote. So, so for one, it's not just Michelson Morley. It's any optical experiment. He, he said Michelson Morley started him. And then since then, since then, he's come to the conclusion that no optical experiment can do it. Right, just takes a little bit of reading comprehension okay. to know what you said is not true. And then sure, he also sure. has a quote where he says, no terrestrial experiment has been able to detect the motion of the Earth. All results were negative. And prior to relativity, and, it and was difficult to become what's, reconciled. What's the with. date? What's the, the date of that uh, quote? And when did and what paper did he write it in? In his pa he wrote about the, uh, the theories of special and general theory of relativity. So relativity, special and general theory, like 1916 or something. And I saw you also lie about that and claim that I didn't know where it came from and that I said it came from 1952 or something. I've literally yeah, I've, I've, never said that. Uh, but yeah, I'll tell and, you and, where you got that. I'll tell you where you got that. Uh -huh. You heard me say something about 1950s from Kosho, who claims that's when, when he found out, Einstein found out that the Machian principle would, would actually oh, not work. Okay, all right. Well, I'll give you that. Yeah, I, so I, that's, I, I may have you were wrong misremembered the whole that. two hours. Yeah. I may, but, have, um, may have, have really misremembered. Bad. I may... Let me tell you this, Austin. I may have misremembered when you claimed that to have been written. It was written in, in part of the paper that he wrote in 1915. I think That's it was 16, something. actually. I think he wrote his, he summarized and gave commentary on his two theories in 1916. And it's, it's uh, relativity, special and general theories. Yeah. But, uh, Nevertheless, that's not, but the point was that you were really, you didn't just like kind of say it, you were like mocking and ridiculing how incredibly I, ignorant I was. And all I've stuff, already right? but, retracted it. You keep living in the past if you need. Well, it's much more about how you did it, right? Okay. But anyway, the point is here that you keep on saying your script that it's, he was just talking about Michael Morley, and that's not true. All you have to do is read this transcript of the speech, and he's clearly explaining that since then, none, no optical experiment, but... There's another quote you guys love to ignore where he explains terrestrial experiment, the one we're talking about here. And he says that they all have negative results and that prior to relativity being put forth, it was difficult to become reconciled with these results. So my question for you is, what did relativity do to reconcile those negative results? About the motion of the Earth orbiting the yeah. sun? Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Um, but, but definitely the, or the rotation of the earth is confirmed using the sag, Sagnac effect. So, oh, well, the Sagnac effect doesn't detect the orbit. So I, I, yeah, yeah, it's not meant to detect the orbit. So that was a yeah. red herring fallacy. Yeah. So, I mean, the thing is though, Wits, that you, you got to remember this, your position isn't whether or not relativity measured the. The or the movement of the orbit of the Earth around the Sun, because that doesn't really wh whether or not you affect that particular measurement or establishment, right? That doesn't change that that you didn't provide any evidence for the shape of the Earth or the movement of the Earth. All that you've done, if all of this works for you, Austin, all you've done is taken away one of many of the different measurements of the rotate, sorry, the orbit of the Earth around the Sun. You really didn't accomplish much, even if you did accomplish this. So this is sophistry, where you use fallacious arguments with an intention to deceive, right? Because Not at all. No. Uh, Austin, uh, you, yeah, your textbook. position, sophistry. you claim specifically that the Earth is stationary. You've said it. You did not yeah. do anything to establish that. Nothing at all. You are specifically focusing on the orbit of the Earth around the sun. So the well, best yeah. you get, Austin, is a globe geocentrist like Robertson Genis. That's that's okay. what you're at basically arguing for. And while I've been listening no. to you talk about this, I keep scratching my head. I'm like, is Austin actually a geocentrist? Because Austin, when when you posted the oh, the Soros sophistry. cycles, the Soros cycles, and you talk about Soros yeah. cycles and geocentric this and and all about how he it's based on a predicted, globe. Yeah, you 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 con no. constantly referenced 
globe geocentric uh, things. And I'm like, what the heck is, are you actually a geocentrist in, in the closet? And you don't want to say it because the other oh, flat earthers is... wouldn't like it. That was, that was what I was thinking. Sophistry. Oh, you're still that's not just done. what well, I was thinking, Austin. Just so you know, I mean, well, if that's uh, not the case, well, I would then, leave then the thinking up to those competent, my guy. So <laughs> instead of changing the subject, I just want to make it public re re real quick. I just want to make it public real quick. I think the flat earth community would humbly accept Austin Witsit as a geocentrist. Well, there you go. Uh, the door's uh, the open, Austin. A, the earth is a stationary topographical plane, right? So the point is, though, I've discovered, right? that to discuss this with the anti-flat earthers, you have to go through the painful process of getting them to even understand their position. Sure, and sure. as MC Toon has just now vocalized, he actually doesn't know it. And so it's not really worth me going and arguing with you about the horizon and dissecting your doublespeak and stuff. We have to start from step one. And step one is you guys claim you know for a fact that the earth moves around the sun. now. That means you don't understand your belief because relativity says you cannot know it for a fact. And, yep. and when I ask you, right. here's like the I question. Said, do you, instead of changing the subject, back to your little diversion. Uh -huh. Do you want me to give you the answer to the question that you don't know? No, 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 I don't. I don't like You don't answer. even want to know. No, but you can. I'm sure you will. But let me, let me just reiterate. Yeah, you just have a script. Even if, even if you, you established all these things. That's just one of many ways that we can establish that the Earth orbits the sun. There's many different ways. So you didn't you didn't establish positive evidence of stationariness. All that you, all that you do, if you were to succeed in this, would be to to take to to address one of many ways that we know that the Earth is rotating the Sun. Okay, so um, you keep saying that when I asked, you brought up parallax, which I'll I'll drop. You should have already known this, but um, maybe you should go watch my stream on geocentrism. But I'll drop some. Uh, information for you in a second that explains a neo tyconic system will explain uh, any parallax or of course it wouldn't be called parallax though that very name begs the question but if the stars were just changing their position we'd have the same observation but it doesn't really matter you're changing the subject because the point is that relativity doesn't make a claim about one specific experiment or anything it's just in general it's about a frame of reference. So it has nothing to do with what it is you're doing inside that frame of reference. Everything inside that frame of reference adheres to the same relativistic laws, right? And that is that time dilates and slows down and that matter contracts and shortens their length. Therefore, you cannot use measuring devices, any de measurement device or apparatus on the earth to detect this motion around the sun. It's a very simple concept. All right, so so you still didn't you still didn't establish the stationariness of the Earth though, which which is okay. your position. So our but but and and your your Ptolemaic stuff. That's again geocentrist globe. Are, is that your position? No, no. You've already got you've no. already got the door open. You don't need to be scared. They will accept you. So said uh, whoever, if that's your position. Yeah. So I don't need to go to that position. But what you don't understand you is it's very you, ironic you what you're doing. It. Is there, is it? You already referenced doing a it text. Also. What you're doing is a textbook shifting the burden of proof because what I'm explaining really? is how Einstein explained that all the attempts to detect this motion of the Earth around the Sun were negative results. Well, a negative result would be evidence for a stationary. No, Earth. it's not. In fact, it's it's quite the opposite. It's a nothing result. It's a we we didn't measure anything, therefore we don't know anything. That's the best you have. A negative result if the is Earth we don't was stationary, know what would you measure? If the Earth was stationary, that, what would you that's measure? That's on that's on you. To no, no, I'm asking how you, to measure in that experiment. If that in in that experiment, if the Earth were stationary, what would you in, measure? In, in the the Michelson Morley experiment, because that's yeah, what, what he's talking about. What would you, what you, would you measure if the Earth was stationary with the Michelson Morley experiment? You'd have the same thing, as okay. long as the aether is is moving at the same rate as the earth right it have to be stationary along with the earth well see this is what you also you globers don't understand um because this is why it's only like anti-flat earth or enthusiasts yeah, just, just jump stuff. to the point instead of patting yourself on the back but calm down you're the one that's the only one that's talked forever so uh einstein understands that the the binary here is stationary earth or earth that's spinning and revolving the spinning the rotating and revolving is a package deal you can't just pick one of them out. 
right? You need them both to explain the phenomena. So either the Earth is stationary or it's spinning and revolving. So we all know we have sidereal rotation, right? Obviously, Einstein was competent enough to understand that. The question is, is it the sky that's moving around the Earth or is it the Earth moving, making the sky look like that? So how, then we go how could, to how the could, how orbit could you measure, question. How could you measure sidereal rotation of the sky moving when you're not even looking at the sky, when the apparatus is not capable of seeing the sky or having access to the sky? Yeah, so there, you're measuring the movement that's connected to the movement in the sky, right? So, and Einstein knew this. That's what he's explaining Whoa, in his letter to so Ernest Mach. Say, say that again. I, I want to hear that again. You're not actually measuring the sky. You're not you're not putting something in the sky. You are okay. measuring a movement yes, that is yeah. connected to the movement in the yeah, sky. So There's the device is moving. The, the 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 device, the Sanyak effect uh, device that Michelson Gale Pearson was doing you know, they, they are measuring the movement of that device. Yeah, right. listen carefully. So Einstein explains in his letter with Ernst Mach, right? That You've been ridiculed for your idea, and people thought it previously thought it was wrong, but I must now concede that for me to continue forward with relativity, I have to incorporate this principle, and that if it were, in fact, the sky moving around the Earth, it would drag the pendulum along, although it would be practically, like, immeasurably small. There you go. Good. Now, yeah, that doesn't refute my position. See, Bryant doesn't understand it. I would encourage you not to take pointers from him because I explained this to him in the email, but he's dishonest apparently. So it isn't that I'm invoking Einstein's interpretation of the universe or relativity. I'm invoking the principle. And the reason Einstein's brought up as a hostile witness is to cut to the chase with the ballers who, if I just brought up the principle, they would mock me and ridicule me as just making something up that doesn't make sense. So I point out to them that their own belief system utilizing relativity requires and necessitates them concede the validity of the Machian principle. Okay, that's the only reason the letter's invoked. The reason that it doesn't refute me that he said immeasurably small is I don't believe that space is a near-perfect vacuum, nor do I believe that the stars are trillions of miles away, nor okay, do I believe, so nor do I believe, wait, this last part, this is an important part, McToon, so you can oh, understand okay, it. Okay, yeah. Nor do I believe that, like, in a vacuum chamber, there's just Newtonian emptiness with only space and time. Now, that's what Einstein thought. So, speaking from that context, he's saying it would be immeasurably small. You understand the difference. Uh, all right. So, and, and how does any of this establish your claim of stationariness? That's the problem. You keep going to this, but it doesn't help you. Even if you succeed, it doesn't help you. Well... How how else do you it, establish the, the the Earth moving around the Sun? How else? Yeah. Newto simple Newtonian uh, laws of motion and gravity. So calculative assumption. Gravity. And and this is no. the point though. No if empirical. We, empirical. If, okay, let's let's look at it from like we're gonna apply Occam's razor, that which requires the least amount of assumption. Uh -huh. Like when we do, do things on the Earth, we treat the Earth like it's stationary. We don't feel it. The globe does have a sufficient answer for why we don't feel it, yeah. right? That's not the point. I never make that argument. But it is the default position that we don't feel it. And it's the default position we see everything move in the sky. It's also the default position that we see a difference in sidereal and solar rotation, as if there are actual entities themselves moving independent of one another, as opposed to one singular uh, illusionary, illusionary movement, right? Illusory, whatever the word is. So that is the default position. Now, when we go try to measure or detect the Earth's movement around the sun, we always get the results that we would get if the Earth were stationary. So that is what all the evidence is saying. Relativity claims that even though it looks like that, actually it's moving. And there's this stubbornly persistent illusion of time dilation and Lorentz contraction that always makes it look like it's stationary. All right. So how, how, does, how did that establish the stationariness? All evidence shows us that it's stationary. Even no, relativity agrees. Definitely, <laughs> definitely not. Definitely name, all evidence name doesn't... One Name yeah. one piece of evidence that's exclusive to the Earth moving. Yes. Uh, well, I will happily do that. A uh, a plastic ball was suspended by fifteen a fifteen Tesla magnetic field. So it's not touching anything, 
and it's and the rotation okay. of the earth was was uh, measured with that I'll, I'll get it for you yeah but you know that i'm not denying sidereal rotation right so the question well, you, is you well, need what to is establish moving? what's causing that yeah what you need to establish that it's not the the apparatus moving you need that it's something else i don't know what what you think it is but the, you know show what that is show show the implications of it quantify it put pencil to paper to show how how that prediction might happen and then we and can then we can like see magic you say yeah. you all, see he magic all he needs is math what's it just give him a couple numbers he'll be good to go well i do actually plan on working out some math but what's funny is you would say that so arrogantly because what would be on the table to do that is coming up with something myself intricately that it took you know, hundreds of years and millions and millions of people and billions of dollars to come up with for your side. So it's funny that you say it like no one can see through that. Like, yeah, I'll try to come up with some numbers for you. But what you need to concede is that the principle is valid, right? That if there was motion around a stationary earth, it would translate motion to the earth. And no, not at all. That, move, the, you you need to establish a mechanism for that transfer. What's the mechanism not for that transfer? The Machian principle and the dictates that that would happen, right? No, no so, that's not a mechanism. What's the mechanism of the transfer? If if something is moving around the Earth, then what is the mechanism that 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 transfers that movement to a magnetically levitating plastic ball? What what transfers that that movement? Oh, what transfers the movement? Well, for one, we have a medium on the Earth. Uh, two, seemingly we what? have a medium in you mean, space. You mean air? Third, we have background energy. Like uh, we oh. have something called free space impedance. So it's it's well oh, known yeah. just, that even just in a vacuum chamber, there's there. some free space impedance. Is is you think that's going to cause something to to uh, moving the outside the Earth to cause something inside the Earth to move? Free space <laughs> impedance yeah, because... doesn't actually do that for you, Austin. Well, good try, but. Um, so the motion is translated through a medium, and What's it's medium? well known nowadays that there is in fact a background medium, What's and it called? You... you don't want to accept it, but that's not really my problem. Hey, that's why you your need, you paradigm is at a standstill. The empirical evidence supporting your claims. Yeah. So okay. where's the so empirical inside, evidence? Yeah, inside of a vacuum chamber, we can measure that it has impedance, 377 ohms, and it okay. has an electric that, constant and a magnetic constant, even inside of a vacuum chamber, right? We but, also have many different observations that show that there is energy coming from the background or becoming All right, manifest. hold on, one at a time. Austin, impedance. Uh, impedance doesn't impart movement. It's just, in, it's just a measure of resistivity to electricity moving through it. That doesn't impart movement. Right, so that how means is that, that there's gonna energy movement? in the background. Okay, and how is that energy then? So, so skip over the impedance because that's nothing then, right? How is the energy going to be doing that? The impedance is the proof of the energy, my guy. <laughs> um, no, no, but yeah, so there's no, energy. Imp, imp, the fact the, that impedance uh, exists uh, 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 is not proof that there scared. is energy. But go ahead, ex explain explain the energy and the empirical evidence that the energy you're talking about can induce something to move. Yeah, so all we need is some type of medium to translate the motion. And Einstein points out that he could not even put relativity forward because they were about to try the Eddington experiment and that in order to invoke the results of the Eddington experiment, he had to concede the Machian principle. That's So if you could be honest, you would concede, well, okay, so then the Machian principle is accurate according to my own position as well. And then we would go forward to say, okay, well, then what would be the mechanism? So you're asking about the mechanism, so I'm guessing you are conceding it's a valid principle. No, no, no. I, I'm just asking about the mechanism. Just, just so tell you me disagree the mechanism. With, well, that's a dishonest debate Go ahead, just stick, because just jump you're trying right to, to skip the mechanism. over the concession just part. Just jump right over to the mechanism. Go ahead. No, that's what you would want to do because it's a dishonest tactic to right, skip so you don't over have a the concession part. You're no, avoiding can, the mechanism because you don't have it? No, no, no. Well, I want to make sure then, everyone then understands tell us that the mechanism, you're Austin. not honest. So okay, if you can concede... Just tell us the mechanism. Go ahead. If you'll just concede the validity and the principle, we'll go on to the next step. No, no. Just just uh, tell us the mechanism, Austin. Are you like a robot? 
All right. Well, you got you got nothing. Got it. Okay. Okay. So he can't answer. Just so the room clearly, he sees he can't answer. I'll go ahead and let you know that he doesn't have a choice here. I'm specifically Einstein asking for you to you provide the mechanism, to and he specifically refuses saying. to answer. No, Einstein said you. I'm have just to telling agree the room that he refuses to provide the mechanism that he says causes the inducement of the motion. He refuses to. He knows he has no empirical evidence to support his claims. Just no, it's tell the room. Actually, just all tell the, the room. empirical. All the empirical evidence shows that a vacuum chamber is not emptiness. So I did you agree yep. with that? It has nothing to do with the mechanism <laughs> that causes or induces rotation on an object. So go ahead. Okay, and so for explain one, the mechanism I, for that. You're you're way out of your league, but so what you're actually <laughs> meaning to ask, what you're gonna have to answer first is what is the source of the motion, you know, period. Like what's the actual source of motion? Yeah, period. you do have that burden. That is a challenge. So that's right. That would be the first question. And that's not a very easy question to answer. Now, that would require you to be intellectually honest. No, it's, but it's we, you. we know it's that's not, not going to happen. It's you so that has the, the burden, it not would, me. It seemingly, seemingly, the source of energy would be in the center of the rotation, right? So close to Polaris in the, the visual sky. There would have to be some source of energy at that point seemingly causing motion. It could also... The source of energy could extend all the way down. I would I would speculate that it is in fact the manifestation of a torus. But secondly, then you really are asking, well, what would translate the I, I, motion? Because it, we don't Taurus, have to answer that question Taurus, before Taurus we can acknowledge the April, phenomenon. Right? What Taurus as people born in April? I'm not into uh, zoology very much. Zodiac. Zodiac. He said you don't zoology. know what a Taurus is. Versus. I was kidding. I know it's not zoology. I'm not much for Zodiac stuff. <clears throat> okay. All right, yeah. go ahead. So anyway, um, now we actually don't have to know what the precisely what the source of energy is to acknowledge the phenomena. Um, it's kind of like your religion, how you don't really know the source of the Big Bang, and you don't know actually the source of all the dark energy well, that when, you see. When am I you talking about Big Bang or dark energy? Well, you see what I'm saying? Not my thing. It's 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 Not very similar. It's very similar, right? Yeah, I, you're asking me to answer a question man. about a source of energy way out in the sky, right? I certainly cannot validate that. I could speculate. But the point is that the principle holds true. This is invoked simply to refute the claim of exclusivity of sidereal rotation on your side. You guys claim that since you can detect sidereal rotation, that can only be because the Earth is spinning. And this is patently well, it, false. It, it's No, it, it, the reason why is because there's many different ways to measure that. And they all agree in the, even though they have different ways of measuring that mech, that uh, rotation, they all agree that the mech, the rotation is the same. It's amazing. When you get lots of agreement with different mechanisms, that sure tells us a lot, doesn't it? That doesn't change anything. We don't deny this ideal rotation exists. Do so you agree that the earth is rotating then? Awesome. See okay. what you see what he just did. I mean, you I'm, said this is, you is this agree with sidereal rotation. I you just said you agreed with sidereal, yes, sidereal rotation. Yeah, did, which yeah, is you said the, that you specifically yeah. said you agree with sidereal rotation. That's the earth rotating. You just no, specifically not, agreed not, with that's that. what you interpret it to be. But okay. sidereal rotation is the stars moving in the sky. Yeah, but but like, like we said, if something can't see the stars, how does the stars impact that thing? So we haven't once established again, that. <laughs> Once again, it's actually detecting the motion that's connected all the way up to the sky. Uh, and, now, and how here, is that here motion is, induced? Here is a Nobel Still Prize winning physicist how that, explaining that. How's that, how's, that, how's that motion induced? Okay, so there's a transfer Can't of energy answer? from the background to the material world. It's, it's been uh, observed many times empirically. So do you oh, agree with that? No, I, you didn't send any uh, empirical measurements of it, so... I'm going to have to see that. Okay, send sure. Send them, so, send them, yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. You don't know that, the, like, so quantum field theory claims, right, which is like the top tier of your paradigm, claims that there's like excitations within fields that comprise all things, okay. right? And, and that this but, but, becomes materially manifest when in a certain modality, right? So that some people would say like when you hit it hard enough, or something, right? So whenever it's uh, excited, then Modality it becomes materially a, manifest. This is well word. known. This is why people are proposing new types of gravity, right? Like quantum gravity. Oh yeah, okay. So you didn't establish the mechanism that causes things in the sky to make things not in the sky move. 
still waiting for that. Yeah, so there's a there's a type of there's a source of motion which is hard to pin down. Of course, it's all the way out in space or okay, sky. I didn't ask about the source. I asked about how that mechanism I'm gets transferred. I'm still yeah. explaining it. Okay. So then everything is moving around, right? And this is translated through a medium, so a more dense medium of the sky, the medium of the earth, and those are additional mediums to the background medium as well. That is immaterial. All these translate the motion, and then it moves seemingly in the form of a toroid. Right, or a torus, and that is de is detected on the Earth. So that's what's added. And that is, of course, interconnected with the motion observed of sidereal rotation. Okay, you didn't, you, you still didn't tell us what, what that mechanism is that causes that, the transfer of motion. So you're asking me to answer a question that all of quantum field theory and quantum mechanics still can't answer. And this is what I wanted to show to this is your this is what claim, I wanted to show claim. to the audience, dude. You pretend that I'm just it's so stupid. It's not my claim, it's and, your claim. Right, but this is what I'm saying. All the evidence shows what I'm saying is true and we've yet to what evidence? even with you haven't your cited paradigm, one piece of evidence yet. Even within your paradigm, we've yet to fully understand it. Yeah, you now didn't you're basically saying evidence. if I can't, Just if I'm not like Nikola Tesla times a million and I can't rewrite all of physics by myself on Discord right now and give you math from the quantum to the cosmological scale to explain all things, even though your entire paradigm still can't do it, then the earth spins. Okay, Think so, so it, sounds like, it sounds like you have a position, but you have exactly zero evidence to support your position. No, it's not zero evidence. I just don't have to oh, quantify then, then with send, specific send claims. The All then. the evidence is of in course, my favor because of any course you have to, to quantify any of your claims. You have the burden of evidence if you make the claim. You're making the claim, therefore you have the burden of evidence. This is from you. You've made a claim of specificity, Austin. You have the burden of evidence to support that claim of specificity. That's your word. Right. So we have the same evidence, which is that we detect sidereal rotation. No, no, no. No, no, that's not, it's the mechanism. I'm asking for the mechanism that causes the transfer of motion from the stars to objects that are not the stars and can't even see the stars. Now, here's where we both have to guess our answer effectively. You say that it's the Earth spinning. I'm saying yes. that it's actually the stuff in the sky moving. Yeah, and, and, and there's a medium, makes there's a background sense. medium that connects all of it. But Austin, it makes perfect sense that something moving can re register something moving when you dev create a device to measure movement. You have not yet established anything that a device designed to measure movement somehow measures, you know, the sky movement. moving when it's not actually moving. Yeah, so I, it's why we go all the way back to where I explained that there's something called the Machian principle, which is the yeah, translation the, of sorry, motion the to mechanism. the interior of a system. Austin, and Einstein explains that this would drag a pendulum around. Yeah, so yeah that, that doesn't, frame dragging doesn't help you. It's way too small. So now you, this is that's where you revert back to your script, but the whole audience has heard I've already destroyed the way too small part. But you don't, you no, can't actually no, debate me, right? That's why you need to frame, stick to your yeah, straw pat, man pat, Austin for two hours on live on streams. Back. Yeah, pat yourself <laughs> in the back. I'm still waiting for the I mechanism because frame dragging isn't the mechanism that answers your question. What's the you mechanism that. that causes it? Well, if so if wait. it is frame dragging, then go ahead and show the application. You don't agree okay. with relativity, so I don't know why you bring up relativity to support your position. Because I know that you're so dishonest, you wouldn't concede the Machian principle unless I forced you to. Yeah, so I used a hostile way. Just you show your evidence. so much. Why do Globers just, do that? Sh just show your evidence, Austin. Why do oh, yeah, have to Just claim. Go ahead. Show your evidence. You have impulse control issues. So uh, watch. I'll ask again and watch. You won't answer again. Do you concede no. and agree with Einstein that the Machian principle is valid? Yes or no? I'm not. No, I don't know. Uh, could <laughs> Austin? I'm just. No. I'm just answer, keep going. Dude. Think about What's the mechanism? What's the mechanism, Austin? You 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 keep you you have this blind faith in that mechanism that you can't even explain what it is. You you have nothing to support it. This is the same as two it's years not. ago when we first talked. You said you said instead of gravity, you wanted to use what Tesla wrote about in the in the the paragraph or the side sidebar of a of a book that you had no idea what he wrote about, but that was the one that you chose. You definitely wanted to go with the one that had no mechanism explained and nobody knew anything about. That was your choice over the well confirmed, empirically verified mass attracting mass. Okay, see. See, mass attracting mass is actually 
long outdated, of course, and gravity is no longer considered an intrinsic property of matter. And where mass yeah, attracting mass came from Austin, was my Newton. Point, my was point Newton, was that you was chose Newton who said that it was God that did it. So I don't know why yeah, you bring funny. that up. Austin, that's so Austin, funny. But two years ago, you chose Tesla's writing, just saying, I have some other idea. That's the one that you said you chose to, to go with. I said over, I currently think it would be more of an electromagnetic phenomenon. Yeah, but this is let me, let me point this out. I'm going to so set you up the again. Same deal. You go with you the, the thing so, that has no evidence over the thing that has evidence. And everyone pay attention to that he invoked mass attracting mass. And yes, mass that attracting mass confirmed. Absolutely <laughs> empirically confirmed. You have to interrupt. Yes. You're nervous. So oh, no, Newton I'm excited. Said, this is fun. You're getting destroyed, though. You don't sound like it. Everyone's hearing it. So <laughs> Newton said mass attracting mass was an act of God. Now you said that Tesla matter. didn't. You said Tesla didn't propose a mechanism, but he did. You're just going to dismiss it as woo woo. But he said that there was an luminiferous ether, huh. and that there was, and that there was a life giving force he referred to as the prana within that. And when this ether was thrown into infinitesimal, prodigious worlds of velocity, it manifested as matter. And that this motion within the ether acted as an uh, basically an all-encompassing medium that presses down on existence. So he did offer a mechanism. You will mm. just hand wave dismiss it, it but you it, will yeah. then invoke the it me attracting mass it act of God. Though. Yeah, it is definitely woo. But I, I don't, I don't, you know, on, uh, Newton's particular explanation for how it happened doesn't really matter because you can empirically verify that mass attracts mass. It's it's easy to do. It's not that hard. And then you can purchase your own. Uh, if you don't want to build your own, I can't believe you can get through that yourself. without coughing or something, dude. You don't actually believe that, do you? No, he does. That I mass know. attracts I've, mass. I've, I've Absolutely. decided he does believe. One hundred percent mass attracts mass. It's been confirmed, empirically confirmed. And Austin, your video by Good yeah. Times for All actually supports it. Mm, wow, I love that. And you 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 didn't you didn't kind of like that one. What are you talking about? That you're just going to name a YouTube channel the, like the, uh, the Good Times for All video. Magnetism? Yes, Incoherent Magnetism. Yeah. In the end, <laughs> I loved it. I loved you're it so much. Because you're nervous because you no, know I, you're walking I, into me because, knowing something way more than you again. Because Austin, because Austin, Incoherent Magnetism says that all matter attracts all matter. Guess what, Austin? Uh, that's still the same as mass attracting man. Yeah, but here's what you don't no, get. <laughs> here's what you don't get. <laughs> So that's actually intrinsically electrostatic. And just because there's an attractive force, right, it's, it's uh, inversely proportionate to mass. Now you claim that it's proportionate to mass. So well, they're directly opposite of one another. Uh, well, but, but w what we verify empirically in, in, you know, by putting something on a, a spring scale is that it's directly proportional to mass. No, no, you don't. <laughs> oh, no, you laugh, it's not. But... So mass yeah. and, and force are are, are not uh, directly con uh, related? How's that? Well, it's not that they're That's not new. related, right? Oh, they are. But okay. it's that your claim of an attractive force is not proportionate to mass. And of oh, course, not what anymore. you just- What's it proportionate to? This is, this is why, why I decided why not does to the debate force, you anymore because- Why does the force go up when the mass goes up, Austin, if it's not directly because proportional? Because you impulsively interrupt. And then when I ask you like five questions, you refuse to answer them. But then you expect me to answer whatever question you can come up with off the top of your head to divert to. Because you're just dishonest. You're not a good you, debater. Austin, you, you, you just said clearly, you made this claim that it's inversely proportional to mass. But yet, it's really not that difficult for anybody to see that force goes up when mass goes up. And so I, I'm just waiting for you to support your claim there. That's right. So now we need to get into what is weight. And before we get into what is weight... This is why you're doing this, because you're drowning out the other parts, which is you claim that detection of sidereal rotation is exclusive to axial rotation, but it is not. Even Einstein himself says via relativistic application, you would have to concede if the Earth is stationary, you'd have a translation of motion that would drag the pendulum around. So then you would just concede the principle and we move on, but you're afraid to. I asked you 
this is you're changing all the way back to gravity now right because i asked you how do you prove that the earth can you agree that relativity says you can't actually detect the earth moving around the sun from the earth and then i gave you the quote of what he said and that he said that uh before relativity was put forth it was difficult to become reconciled with this result i asked you how did relativity reconcile the results you said you didn't know you said that matter didn't physically contract and then you got corrected on that and skated past that and now you've wanted to scatter gun random divergence i specifically said I specifically said for, for contraction that within our reference frame, it doesn't. And that was always my position. Does it physically contract overall? Within our reference frame, I will say that it does not. But in reality, it does. It's just our whole reference frame also contracts, right? See, you don't understand it. Oh, I certainly do. Uh, no, you don't. You literally all right. don't. All right, come on. Okay, let me explain it to you. So oh, relativity oh, says that awesome. the whole reference frame contracts, and that's why you can't detect it. So it's not that it doesn't contract in your reference frame as the, much as wait, it doesn't wait, contract relative to reference your frame? reference frame. The it doesn't entirety? contract relative to your reference frame because the whole reference frame contracts. You understand wait, that, right? Wait, the yeah. entire reference frame contracts? Yeah, all from, of space. From an, external, from an external reference frame, the entire reference frame contracts. All of space, or all just, observers, all just, measuring devices or just, contract. Or is it directly proportional to the, the part that's near mass? This is so and funny. The part you that's just don't... moving at high velocity. Yeah, so like whenever which, you're which is... in the reference frame that is being affected by Lorentz contraction, then all the space in that reference frame contracts as well. Like you could think of you being on a train and it moving, and then you have a ruler. Relativity says that ruler is contracting. And if you held it up to the window to measure the window, as the ruler contracts, the window also contracts. Just, just for as does somebody all outside the space the in the train, so it would look like nothing contracted in your reference frame. Do you understand? Yeah, just, just, just outside the reference frame, though. As I said before. If you were outside of it, then yeah. you would be able to measure the re uh, contraction. Yeah, just outside the reference frame is where it contracts. So where do we have yeah. to get to to be outside the reference frame as it pertains to Earth? Well, on on the to go to the train model, the person standing on the platform. No. Yeah. No. See. Oh, oh, no. oh, outside. The, yeah. See. So yeah, that's it. Would look like it's uh, changing from outside the train, but in reality, if you tried to measure it, then it wouldn't show contraction. And this is very, it's, it seems like it's convoluted, somewhat convoluted, because that's your model's, you know, religion, but it is simple, and it is that you can't detect or measure the Earth's motion around the Earth, or I mean, yeah, the Earth around the Sun, from the Earth because of time dilation and length contraction. So, uh, you'll get there, though. And then when it comes to the mass attracting mass thing, you're, you're invoking weight when you bring up the spring scale, so we have to define yeah. weights. Yeah, mass times acceleration. Okay, so uh, acceleration is obviously not exclusive to what you think it is, right? It's just the effect. The question is, what's the cause? Uh, w when you're looking at an, a physical law, the cause is not part of it. Right, but if you're invoking it as if to support your other claims and your model, then cause becomes a part of it. No, but no, it, it absolutely, when you're looking at a physical law, the cause is not important. For example, Snell's law. Do do you you need to know the cause of uh of the refraction in order to use Snell's law? No. In order to confirm no. that Snell's law is in fact empirically valid, you just need to measure the refraction. You don't need to know why. So just like well, in Snell's the, law actually does have some discrepancies. I'm and, sure you and, don't know and, that. And but just it's, like, it's, it's arguably the best of all the options. Sure, okay, but this is the so, point. Weight is actually relative to many variables. And your paradigm claims that these are just additional variables to a force that's presupposed. And that's why it does come into claiming the cause, right? Because weight is actually relative to medium, to magnitude, to vector, to coherency, to wait, location. Wait. Hold on. Let, let's, let's get this clear. Medium, yes, because buoyancy is a, is a thing. So you're on your free body by diagram, you have your weight due to gravity down and you have your buoyancy up. So what else? Okay, then what's buoyancy? Now we got to figure that out. Yeah, we, I mean, we go over that in physics class. Okay, and so what but is it? it yeah, it's, it's the displacement of the medium, right? So you take the volume displaced, take the, the yeah. mass of the volume displaced is, is important then. So what causes the displacement? The, that there's something in there. 
right? Yeah, so when you, yeah. you put you put your object on the scale and it displaces the air that used to be there, the thing being right. in the way is the cause. And the displacement is relative to density, right? The density of the the displaced material, yes. Relative to the density of the medium. So then now we need to figure out what density is. Oh my gosh, yeah. This, this yeah, you infinite, see how this you see how your script re, is very disingenuous. This infinite it, recursion. You I mean you can do it all the way to base the to first principles. We can do all those things, right? We, we we don't need to because we can we can work at a higher level than that because all these things are not actually questioned. Wow, but if you want to question them all, you go right ahead. It. You just go right ahead. Have you, right, before have you, we get, that's why I said we were going to get into all the weeds, right? Because I saw that's where it's coming. You sure, can see sure, that sure. you can pretend okay, it's right, me being yeah. pedantic or well, something. You it's not me being yes, pedantic. You are being pedantic, certainly. No, I know that it I comes off that. like I'm being pedantic, but it's important it certainly distinguishment. Does. Absolutely comes off being pedantic, but fine. fine. I, I know, yeah. Question and, and you know you can't all actually physics down to first principles. Go ahead. Are you starting to notice that like you can't debate me about it? But um, I would like to say though, McTeen, can you please do me a favor? Because like just to good. continue in good faith, I would really prefer if you would just be honest and and you would concede the first part, which is that you concede the validity in the Machian principle and oh that you gosh. must according to. Can you just concede uh, that part? I'm sorry, no. So you disagree with Einstein? I don't know. Whatever. Don't care. Oh my God. <laughs> nice. That's fair. I'll take. I don't know. Whatever. So what that can is you a completely do? Completely dishonest attack. <laughs> okay, now here I'm asked the other question that you skipped past again. Einstein said that all terrestrial experiments attempting to detect the motion of the Earth have resulted in a negative result, and prior to relativity being put forward, it was difficult to become reconciled to this result. So, what did relativity do to reconcile those negative results? I, I don't know. Don't care, Austin. We can measure all these things externally. So, like I said, the best you do is you take one thing away of the the measurement of the rotation of the Earth and the orbit of the Earth around the Sun. There's other ways to do these things, and you you don't move your your position forward at all you don't provide supporting evidence for your position austin well this why is don't the you thing actually that... try to go for evidence supporting your oh i know why well this is the thing right so you're kind of being disingenuous because the whole position that you hold is that the evidence does support a stationary earth no it doesn't but don't, that no literally your position is that the evidence supports that the sun moves around the earth that the earth is stationary but that since relativity is true no that's not my position no this is objective this is objectively you straw manning me that's not my position no. relativity says that although the the results and the evidence appears to show us that the earth is stationary it's actually just an illusion <laughs> whatever it doesn't help you it doesn't you move you forward so you agree with that though right no Wait, it does not what? appear to be stationary it is a negative yeah, result at best it is a we don't have a result it is nothing useful that's what that it, means austin it doesn't mean that it is stationary if, it doesn't if, mean that it's evidence <laughs> for stationary it is evidence for nothingness at best that is so disingenuous. If the Earth was stationary, <laughs> if the Earth was stationary, would we get a negative result? Yes or no? If the Earth was stationary or rotating, we would get a negative result. Now you're it's, just begging the question of the ad hoc explanation that tried to explain why the results were negative. Neither. It's Probably nothing at best. Belief in public he has to so, fake his belief in public and that's why he talks like this he may well, not be being disingenuous he wants people to believe he actually believes this shit so do you else? see do you see like what he's doing right he set up this oh, yeah. narrative where even though all the evidence shows that the earth is stationary he's claiming it doesn't it doesn't he's claiming show that we that. can't no, it use definitely that evidence doesn't show that it, do, it literally does. Like all that's what it really does it is. It all literally is a negative result, as as Einstein said. A negative right, because result he from attempted Michelson to Morley. detect the motion, but got using, a negative result, which Michelson is what you would Morley. get if the yeah. Earth wasn't in motion. <laughs> you you get. Why in, do you pick this? Why do you pick this specific like like part he's, of what he's Einstein a, he's said? A, because I found that you guys are so dishonest, you can't even talk about this. He's with Robert Sengenis, is what he is. No, That's what no. I think. Now, see, now he can just straw mammy, right? But the well, reason, Platypus, is because you guys... He's constantly bringing I, up geocentrism. 
That's his thing. But I see. I love it. I'm not. I don't. I wouldn't even want McToon to be over here with us, trying to figure out the true nature of the Earth. Right? I no, don't do this to wake up back. anti flat Earthers that can, have impulse control issues and constantly there. interrupt me like he's doing right now. I do this for people that are new to the subject, and I get many emails that say, "Wow, like it wasn't really you. It was how dishonest they were being that made me decide to look into it." And that's why I talk about this because I found right, that right. unfortunately no baller yeah, can even the admit back. this stuff. Patch yourself in the back. Well, it's kind of like an intellectual honesty litmus test, right? At the beginning, that's what we're kind of building up to, I think. Yeah, right. and it should be like a five second thing, and then we get into yeah. the nitty gritty of the conversation. But I found out that it actually turns into hour, two hour, three hour long debates. Okay. Any evidence supporting your claim? No, got it. You never yeah, do, so, Austin. You never even try and you think that a negative result of an experiment is somehow evidence for your position it's not it's a a, a a result of nothingness you can draw no conclusions from a negative result from michaels and morley this is it's just Around so dishonest it, this is so movement, this is so I dishonest so. oh yeah, you just it. don't understand you're out of your league come on austin you are. stop patting yourself on the back stop puffing up your chest show some are evidence Wait, watch. This is what he couldn't. He, if you ask he can't. Him, like, oh, he can't would, even. He. I'm so much smarter than him. You're I'm Austin. Out. I'm so smart. You're out of my league, everybody. I'm Why way smarter than out? everybody. Because Austin, that's what I, you do constantly. If no, you spend I don't half your time, than everybody, than everybody, you, yeah, you do. Bro, you constantly say you have a high a high IQ. Can I talk yet? You walked. You went around the country yelling at people on streets that you have a higher IQ than all of them. But the only reason I ever brought my IQ personal. up on the streets is because people would say, you're such an idiot. They would actually well, yeah, say, I you mean, must have, have less than an 80 IQ. You must have dropped out of high school. You're a moron. So I would say, I actually have a pretty high IQ. So if we can throw that out the window, you want to talk about the actual subject. But this is the point, right? Um, I don't even think you're stupid. I just think that dishonesty renders a person's position stupid. And I'm trying to get you to be honest. And if you could just be honest, that'd be cool. Because if I asked you, well, then what would you suggest we do to show that the earth is stationary? You would say, I don't know. That's your job. And the it truth is. is that if, the, yeah. yeah, but if, if someone's competent and honest, they would know that if the earth is stationary, then any attempt to detect motion of the earth would be negative. You don't measure stationary. That's stupid. You can measure stationary. Of How course so? you can. Is, here, rotation is absolute. Linear motion is relative, but rotation is absolute, Austin. How do you measure stationary? Measure for rotation, and if you get none, then it's stationary. So when we measure for orbit, we get none. Oh, I said rotation, not orbit. Ro uh, orbit is a rotation. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for playing. Yeah. So the reason why you you orbit. uh. Um, <clears throat> the reason why Michaels and Morley can't measure it is because it's not, it's not designed to do that. It's not capable of doing it, but Michaels and Gale can measure orbit as long as you have use an external reference frame, because again, um, linear position is relative. So you need an external reference frame in order to measure the rotation using the Sag Sagnac effect. Michaels and Gale Pearson can as long as you use a, an external reference frame, like how long it takes for the sun to return to the same point in the sky. Oh, so beg the question. So Mickelson Gale Pearson doesn't detect orbit. That's not what it's designed to no, do. No, it's not. Right? It, so it that, measures rotation. Yeah, but you can. That's right. Using using an op optical gyroscope, you can measure the the orbit of the Earth by um, referencing a a fixed position like the sun. So this is 38 years after Mickelson Morley, and it and it's entirely irrelevant to what Mickelson Morley was trying to do. Um, and yeah, it matches the sidereal rotation prediction within 98% accuracy. And that's because, of course, the 15 degrees per hour isn't exact. It's a convention we use for time, and it actually fluctuates in between that 98 and 100 percentile. But uh, yeah, it matches it. And so the question actually is, and I think you you and Bryant have finally tried to come up with an answer for this. Most, so I'll applaud you for that. Most Globers have run away, and I guess it is 2022. But let's see if you can explain to the room and see if they buy it. So if we use interferometry and we could detect the sidereal rotation within 98% accuracy of the prediction, then why can't we use interferometry to detect the orbit? Well, I just explained it. I just specifically said that. Did you miss that? 
I want you, you to can, explain it specifically can, to the room where everyone abs, can understand uh, it. I okay, want you to I'll, say it. I'll do it again. Thank you. Just did. So, yeah, so, he just did. Yeah, so you can use, because because the Earth is not tidally locked to the to the sun, you, you could if it was tidally locked, but since it's not, we have to use an external reference. So you can say um, midday to midday, and you can measure the rotation with that as your reference point if you have a, a fiber optic gyroscope or potentially any other uh, measurement of rotation device, provided it's sufficiently accurate. You could detect orbit that way? Yeah. So you would have to go to the moon? No. You could just, yeah, you use, you could just use the sun as a reference. Using the sun as a reference? Yes. Is, can you drop the paper where they measure the orbit of the Earth from the Earth, please? Because you're like making said, stuff up. Like I said, you could use a fiber optic gyroscope or any other measurement device, provided it's uh, precise enough. And you could go from uh, sun, you know, middle of the day to middle of the day over and over and over again. And you can get your position movement from that. Wow. So seeing the difference in the sun shows you that we're moving. You asked me how it could be done within the within the model of the globe orbiting the sun and i answered you that's how well, you that doesn't do actually it. detect it right so mickelson morley was way more advanced than that right like at the time they were like wow the uh orbit is only just under 20 miles a second and that's gonna be really hard to detect uh, i was i was but talking then about he invented interferometry which was very precise and their device and apparatus was sensitive enough to detect two miles a second it was like a big deal right it was a really like earth shattering invention interferometry so then they use it to detect it your answer would actually need to be to actually detect it independently without begging the question by just looking at the sun and even though the sun moves you assume we're moving oh you, you would added need to go those to the moon. you added those conditions if you went to the moon if you went to the moon like in artemis where you think they're up there about to go to the moon and i guess 2024 if they would set up a mickelson morley experiment on the moon then they would, in principle, be able to detect the orbit of the Earth. Uh, that's not what I said at all. I don't know why you went there. So, do you agree or disagree? No, I, I hold on. I think I think Tune laid out specifically why that wouldn't work for the Moon. I think the difference would be just a case in point. It's because the Moon is tidally locked to the Earth. That's why it would work, Platypus. <laughs> yeah. Do I so, have that backwards? Yeah, yeah. Yes. If if the Earth were tidally locked to the Sun. You wouldn't need to reference that. You could just do a straight measurement. But since the Earth is not tidally locked to the sun, then you need to use the sun as a reference point. Yeah, so the problem with that is that doesn't really help us like detect or measure anything. It's uh, We're just like looking at, we all know the sun moves in the sky. The question is, is it really stationary Austin, relative to us? And it just looks like... You specifically you asked me how you could do it within the globe model, the globe orbiting the sun model, and I answered I that. I didn't say that. Okay. Now, I can tell you how we can measure orbit in other ways than using interferometry or things that are independent of the special relativity. Or Wait, can you drop relativity. a paper for that, though, first, so we can all look at it? Can you drop a for, paper where they claim they used a gyroscope to measure the orbit of the Earth? I, I didn't say that they did. You asked if it was oh. possible. And I explained how it's possible. So it's never been done? I don't know if it's ever been done, but I specifically... Why don't you go get you your Nobel Prize? You specifically asked me if it was possible, and I specifically told you how, to, how it could be done. Then why don't you go get your Nobel Prize? Because that would be earth-shattering that why, someone's why come would, up with a way to measure that, the orbit of the Earth from the Earth and disbunk, de debunked relativity. That, that would, nobody would care about that. The, the orbit of the Earth around the Sun has been well-established. Nobody would give any Nobel Prize for that. No one would care if relativity was debunked. So um, the problem here is that you objectively can't measure the orbit of the Earth. And you have a dishonest script where you're no, saying, where's your measurement of stationary? You objectively Can any baller in here be honest enough incorrectly. to admit that you couldn't measure the movement of stationary and that the actual evidence for it being stationary would be negative results and attempt to detect motion? No. If you, wanna, if you want to quote Baller to, be, to come in here and be honest about it, let's just pick, pick apart what MC Toon said just a moment ago. If you're using the sun as a reference and you're measuring rotation with a gyroscope, what you'll end up finding is the difference between 15.04 degrees per hour, the sidereal rate, and 15 degrees per hour, the mean solar rate, which means 
what he described is actually correct. The difference between the uh, sidereal rate and the mean solar rate would be the orbital rate. If what you assume at the outset is true, so that isn't measuring and detecting Earth's orbit, right? Because, of course, the sun and the stars could just be moving at different rates. Duh. So that is, you claim that because the angle of view to the sun is different than the angle of view to the stars in the background, then you get a slight difference. You just, asked, you just asked how it could be done, and I explained how it could be done. Then you no, went on so about other stuff. Yeah. Dude, you people are really quick, I just wanted to point that you out. Asked MC Doofus, Doofus just pointed out that uh, the yeah, movement of the sun is a mean uh, calculation. And the other day, that Miktoon claimed that it was a consistent 15 degrees per hour always. But it's not. Pretty interesting, right, right Miktoon? Yeah. All right, so, so why don't right? I go ahead and finish what I was saying? So if you, if <laughs> okay. you had... He, in the context of the question that you asked MC Toon, you asked him, how in the GLOBE model would you be able to do that? The difference between the sidereal rate and the mean solar rate would be exactly that answer. That's what he's giving you, and he's giving it to you in such a way that it's syntactically different, but still the same result. Wow. So, so once again, problem? no one disputes sidereal and solar rotation differences. See, this is, you know, Einstein obviously knew that. And he wasn't so stupid that he would ever claim that proved the orbit. That's why he was attempting to find a different type of experiment that would actually directly measure the movement, which is what we're talking about. We're not talking about looking in the sky and making assumptions. We're talking about directly measuring the movement. Now, an honest baller would say, according to relativity, you could never do that from the Earth. And then we would move on. But it seems that if you ever have to concede to a flat earther, I, it's like a nightmare. Austin, for you. I just showed you how you could do that. I just explained. And then it. he says it again. I just explained how it's possible. It'd be their worst nightmare. That's not a direct measurement of movement of the Earth, though. Why not? Because you're looking at a difference in rotation of the sky how, how's, how's and that assuming not... the cause of that yeah, difference. Yeah. It's with, the same thing within, with parallax. Yeah, within the paradigm of the globe. That's, well, if this, we're trying to the test first, the paradigm the of the globe. No, Austin, you, you, this is all asked within the context of that paradigm. See, you're trying. See, you. What you Let did is you're going into the paradigm, including relativity. When you go, go relativity, orbit of the Earth around the, the Sun, you are within the paradigm, and you're like, how could you measure that? How could you measure direct that direct that measurement? How is that motion. not? A, how is that not a direct measurement? It's not a direct measurement of motion. Okay, of the so, Earth. so you so you you move the goalpost, you change the thing to to, no. to demand the direct measurement, and you've no. narrowly defined what a direct measurement is. No, Got I it. explained this the whole time, which was this is what the whole conversation was about. Einstein was talking about how Mickelson Morley eventually made him come to the realization that you couldn't directly measure the orbit of the Earth around the sun. Um, and so he was trying to come up with an explanation as to why they were all futile pursuits and they always seemed to point to the earth not moving around the sun. And yes. then he came up, that's literally what it was. And then he came that's up with special works. relativity. So, and, well, and, and what he his, did was, of course, incorporate the Lorentz contraction. So when I ask you, when, when Einstein says that uh, all attempts terrestrially to detect the motion of the Earth around the sun, you think Einstein didn't know about sidereal and solar rotation? Of course he knew about that. He's talking about directly measuring it with an experiment on the Earth, and he says there's no experiment, no terrestrial experiment that can all right. measure well, or detect. So Stuart, Stuart Christmas says, my PhD was in high-precision interferometry, and this is just painful. We all know wow. that spectroscopy and interferometry needs a container. <laughs> He's having a having a go at dearth there. Well, all right, the Austin. specific results of spect spectroscopy yeah. do right. actually need to be contained and controlled. But sure, anyway, sure I'm just going to wrap this okay. up. This is the conclusion yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, like it, it, what I'm saying is objective. It's unfortunate no, that global. What you're saying is your, your your opinion. But go ahead. No, no. no. Every Einstein time you say objective, watch, we know that you're lying. It's watch, it's been like 30. No, objectively, when you, you say can't objective, answer the it's question. The opposite. When you say objective, watch. it's the opposite. 
Einstein said no terrestrial experiment can detect the motion of the earth and they all have resulted in negative results. And prior to relativity being put forward, it was difficult to become reconciled with these results. What did relativity do to reconcile the negative results? Yeah, he's just talking about Michelson Morley. No, he's not. This quote has nothing to do with Michelson Morley. Sure, okay. So you're conflating the optical experiment and terrestrial experiment quote. Why are you keep sure, doing okay. that? All right, if you say so. Do I need to drop both of the quotes in the chat? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Include the one that follows that. That yeah, Einstein yeah, the entire about quote, not not the cherry picked afterwards. one. Yeah, not the one where you put yeah. the period where a comma is. Look what they're doing. Look what they're doing. So they're conflating yes, we're identifying it to... your oh, deception interrupt. Interrupt. because you so, lied about his quote and you got caught no. on it and you know now that you shouldn't do that. So will that will that uh, image that you post in the chat will it include the comma or the period? Well, I meant to, I should have put two periods, um, and I'll happily put the rest of the quote because the, the yeah. rest of the quote is more damning for you because it makes the point even stronger, which is coming from Einstein, who, of course, believed the Earth was moving around the sun. He said that you can't use an optical experiment to actually detect that, and that's the actual argument. Then you guys try to straw man it. This is very remedial, by the way. You guys claim that the last sentence where he says, although the earth moves around the sun, you literally claim that it refutes our claim, which goes to show that no, the you're reason just why, remedial. The reason why I call that out is because lying, deceptive flat earthers intentionally removed that from the quote, replaced the comma with a period and an end quote because they don't mind lying to support their position. You say liars a few more times though because the audience needs to hear it more so it's ingrained so they think you won the debate. Go ahead. But it's all good. Honest but people it, will see what's true. happening. So That's how it's posted. It's absolutely so true. I just now Austin, conceded I should have I just video, now conceded I should have put a like dot a dot comma. instead of just one dot. Oh, yeah, and yeah. I will happily update the meme because good. all Thank it you. does is make my point stronger but this is all in a diversion away because you guys have all agreed on a script for that quote but you don't have a script yet agreed upon for the other quote so you always divert to the optical experiment quote because you don't know what to say to the other one i'm gonna say it again though he said that all terrestrial experiments attempting to measure the motion of the earth have resulted in a negative result prior to relativity being put forth it was difficult to become reconciled with these results. This has nothing to do with Michelson Morley. It has nothing to do with the optical experiment quote. This is a different quote. So the question is, once again, what did relativity okay. do Send the quote. to Send reconcile the quote those and the negative results? So we, can, so we can look it up so we can get the reference, right? Because because you're just you're just having a very small port. So what is the context of the quote? You you didn't include that. So go ahead, put it in the chat here. I want to see it. The year Look it was it said okay. was also important yeah. because it, as it was pointed out earlier, uh, Einstein made some later statements about frame dragging, about the Machian principle. Well, you you guys have claimed that, that but I asked Kosho for yet. three straight months to provide proof of that, and he never I'm got not back Kosho. to me. So I'm not Kosho. So so do you have it? I I don't have the I don't have that at hand because you haven't asked for it. From have me you ever before. read it? What? You actually have seen that? I don't Dupus, know have what, you seen it? I don't know what your specific... Why are you bringing it up, Dupus? <laughs> Come on, have you ever read it? it? Can you drop the citation for us? Dig it up. Dig it up. Come on. Dupus is the one claiming it, right? So, so you are the, the one Rovers talking have about... claimed that Einstein ended teasing. up walking back you've his letter teasing. to Ernest Mach. Austin, but they've teasing. never provided evidence for it, but quote. they keep saying it. quote. Teasing that quote out. Do you have it? Put it in the chat. Yeah, I got it. But also, in addition, um, th this see, is all yeah. diversion away because Mach's principle is about rotation, right? So that was a non sequitur. That was called a red herring fallacy, doofus. And also, why do you keep making up that he walked it back if you don't actually have the evidence of it? Why would you keep repeating? So I thought flat earthers are the ones that just repeat things that they hear from other people and don't actually research it. That's true. Then why do you keep doing it? <laughs> all right. I'm still waiting. I don't see it. I'm watching. I'm anxiously watching. There it is. Okay. Yeah, I think this might have some typos what, in it, but I was, where's, it was where's late. The, what's the date? I think what's this is from that? 1916. Um, yeah. To the question, yeah. yes. So that was that was specifically about Michelson Morley because it was written 10 years before Michelson Gale Pearson happened. No, that doesn't. No, this isn't even about rotation. So 
Oh, you guys just don't understand. Austin, like, it, Austin, 10 years before Michelson Gale, he could not possibly have been speaking about Michelson Gale 10 years before it happens. Einstein is pretty good with time and space, but he doesn't have a TARDIS. I get it. That's your like joke that you keep saying, but that's this isn't about rotation. This quote's not about rotation. So why do you keep bringing up Mickelson Gale Pearson, which is just about rotation? Yeah, okay. Because I said how, about, how, how Michelson Gale Pearson could have done it. They keep bringing like up Mickelson Gale Pearson. This is talking about the orbit around the sun. Yeah, using specifically only one thing he was talking about, Michelson Gale. That's all he was talking about, Austin. That First exact all, he, quote he wasn't was talking only about, talking about Michelson Morley. That's it. You misspoke. That's you said Michelson Gale, but... Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. So it wasn't though. So you, have you ever actually read this quote? I have, Austin. I have. Really? Let me yes, drop for really. the whole audience. You can see there are two different quotes, and the Globers have all came up with a script for the first quote, but they can't rebut this one. They don't know what to yep. say. Actually, Later. it looks like somebody has tagged me and already has a direct response to that that they gave to you before. I uh, remember J Ace, right? This is also about rotation, so it's not actually a rebuttal to what we're talking about. about once Michelson again, doofus, or maybe you Morley. should just go on mute, because every time you come uh, off mute, you embarrass but, yourself. So why don't we go ahead and read it out loud to see if it's actually what you say it is. Okay, so this is about rotation, and it's non sequitur. Now we'll read it and see if my accusation was correct. It's right here. I've posted this a million times about this Mox principle silliness. Oh, Mox principle about rotation. So we were actually talking about the orbit that you guys are terrified of admitting that Einstein said no terrestrial experiment can detect the orbit of the Earth around the sun, and that it, all the results were negative prior to relativity being put forth it was difficult to become reconciled to these negative results which means relativity helps reconcile the negative results which means we need to now answer the question what did relativity do to reconcile you those negative to, results uh, no no you, you didn't on. actually hold want on, to read wait, the wait. thing that he, he, he it's a, it's a diversion you guys are desperately trying to divert and obfuscate wait we, we just on. want it's to read the quote really that you provided. Like we're talking point, about point this is not a quote what's it that that Einstein thing that you're putting up doesn't speak at all about whether or not it's possible or impossible to detect it. He's just talking about how it wasn't. What's the word I'm looking for? Done at that time. He's he's he, right. He's a, don't don't infer that he's saying it's uh, impossible but, to do it because that's what you just said. You said not only hadn't it been, but that it was impossible to do it. And he's well, that would be a really. Impossible. That would be a really good illusory rebuttal if you didn't know I was setting everyone up already. But I'll, I'll explain. I'll go ahead and show my cards to you, Platypus. So the reason that I say impossible is because when he says that it's reconciled, relativity made particular claims as to what reconciles the negative results. If you guys knew what that was, then you would know why I use the word impossible. No, nay, nay, my it's friend. It's specific if you're, if you're gonna to Michaels and Morley. Oh, Oh, They'll never gonna address it. And if you're going to clarify that he's not talking about rotation in this quote, then I'm going to clarify and say he's not talking about anything that re relativity actually says in that quote. He just he says that he's he, he's again he only mentions <laughs> relativity in that quote in the context of talking about things that happened before relativity. Ah, uh, no he's duh. Still not talking about anything that can or cannot be proven with or without relativity. Okay, you're lost, but. Now, see if you can answer it, Platypus. What did relativity do to reconcile the negative results? I do not have a strong enough understanding of general relativity to really answer any questions about it. Okay. But, well, uh, if you did understand it, then you would understand your question is actually, your critique is not a very valid critique. Okay. Right. Why would I'm you sorry. interject so vehemently then if you weren't actually sure about what you were saying? I was pointing I was I was talking specifically about the quote and what he was saying the quote said, which he said something that the quote did not say. I was just pointing out a point of clarification. All right. I so know. for uh, reference say, for reference, I want to say the very next paragraph, he specifically details Michelson Morley. This was right. written ten years before Michelson Gale Pearson. Yeah, drop right? the full so, source. So there's other, drop the full source. 
it, it's his paper from 1915. Yeah, drop it. So, because because you're Absolutely. pretending this quote is just about Mickelson Morley, which goes to show that either you a don't understand it or b you're being dishonest. So now the audience is going to get to see it if you'll just even take screenshots of the book you got. Hold on, why isn't there a third option? Those are the that only it's options. About Mickelson Morley. It's not though. I actually know it's not. So why is the paragraph that follows about Mickelson Morley then? Because he goes on further to explain some of the things that had been used in attempt to detect the motion. Duh. Yeah. So he explains right here. Let's read the quote again. To the question whether or not the motion of the Earth in space can be made perceptible in terrestrial experiments, we have already remarked that all attempts of this nature, all attempts of this nature yeah written in 1915 MC says this is only talking about mickelson morley but einstein says all attempts of right, this he's not nature speaking of attempts in the future yeah he's not so speaking all of, attempts of these yeah, attempts he's not a time all traveler attempts, it doesn't matter because you're bringing up mickelson gail pearson which isn't about the orbit fifth time so it says all attempts of this nature led to a negative result before the theory of relativity was put forward, it was difficult to become reconciled to this negative result. So once again, what did relativity put forward that reconciled the negative results? Yeah, coming up with better experiments. Like Michelson. Relativity yeah. relativity put forward coming up with better experiments? Yeah, you asked the question, I answered it. Better that experiments isn't an answer. in the future. In the future. It absolutely is. The way that relativity reconciled negative results when he said this quote was something happening a in the future. Better experiment. Yes, a better experiment. Oh my God. You so he you don't says, think better experiments are possible? Is no, that I think that's completely not an answer to the question. Oh, so why not? He, they did better oh. experiments in the future. He right, didn't dude. know the future. He didn't time travel. Doofus, if, if you're, you're interested in apologies for about... him, you're going to keep making yourself look ignorant. If you're interested, I did actually mention this about, what is it, 45 minutes ago. I said, an orbit is free fall. That's what's causing the results that he got. That you wouldn't expect to see that kind of result in one direction, in one part of the orbit, and in another direction, in another part of the orbit. Because in both parts of the orbit, you're in free fall. Okay, so what you're now saying time. is that you wouldn't be able to detect the orbit. They're yeah. all over the place, aren't they? This is hilarious, that's, that's, and they're arrogant. So, using specifically see, Michael Simoli. Make sure you change this up. Let's be very clear about what I actually said. Let's be very clear, said. Let's be clear about what I actually said. Let's be very clear about what I actually said. Doofus, nobody wants to hear you repeat seven times. You guys cut me off so I can't actually clarify what I actually said. Now, what I actually said was you wouldn't be able to uh, detect some sort of a difference on different parts of the orbits, given the mechanism or the the experiment that was set up, Michelson Morley, that isn't set up to do that kind of test. Now, if we want to have a test that directly measures something, the best we've got is directly measuring rotation, and then using a reference, as MC Tune pointed out earlier, to come up with the orbital motion. So once again, um. It's a very simple question. I know the answer. If you guys will just concede you don't know, then I'll tell you the answer. I've no, actually already said it. No, in the Austin. Comp. How no, can someone we've gone over it. Gave, Stop an repeating back to the same stupid thing. It's Michelson Morley that he was talking about. That's all that had happened up until that time that he that he was referencing. There's other things too, but that's the main one. The very next paragraph in that paper, he talks about Michelson Morley. He did not talk about My Michelson Gale. It had not happened yet. So no one nowhere... claimed he talked about Michael Stengel. Why do you keep know. repeating the straw man fallacy that I claim he's talking about future experiments? I You've know. said it five times. Th and you, you, you asked the, the question, and the answer to your question, how did it reconcile? It says all like, attempts. Like Better you, experiments. Hey, so dude. it literally I, says all attempts all in the past. Quote, yeah, all past, which is in the past to him. Uh, okay, that, I never said it wasn't. So he wasn't talking about future things. So, so I never that, said he was. So how did he with rectify it, that? The answer is he dude. did a better. I know, but they he's did a better experiment. This is going out to the internet. It's recorded Austin. on two places. So. Austin. <laughs> <It> is, <laughs> the answer is sure everybody knows they, desi is they designed better like experiments and over and over and over. Yeah, the same straw man pretending well, like he's correcting a position that you never held. He'll definitely interrupt as I begin to expose the straw man. So. 
This is what I've explained very simply. I'm not claiming he's making any type of assessment of future experiments. I'm not claiming he's talking about Mickelson Gale Pearson that hadn't happened yet. This is nine years before Mickelson Gale Pearson. Nor is Mickelson Mickelson Gale Pearson even rele relevant to the context of this quote because it's talking about orbit and Mickelson Gale Pearson detects rotation. So back to the primary point here, which is even now you keep saying it's only Mickelson Morley. Then you said, oh, well, there's other things too, but it's primarily Mickelson Morley. But it doesn't matter. Even if it was just Mickelson Morley, which it clearly isn't because it says all attempts of this nature, the question still remains. What did relativity do to reconcile the results of Mickelson Morley? Better experiments. That isn't the answer. Well, it is. It is the answer. So, you don't like it. I don't care that you don't like it. It hurts you because it contradicts your d desperately held uh, position. But I don't care. It doesn't wow, matter. That's crazy. the answer. So, That's the so answer, it, Austin. That isn't the answer because he is. had not done better experiments yet. Just like you said, he's not a time traveler. So yeah. he wouldn't be claiming yeah. that relativity reconciled something by something that he, happens yeah, in the he, future. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Yeah, he did. He's obviously saying that relativity helped reconcile the negative results they had up to that time. So the question is, well, what does relativity specifically do that helps fix that problem of negative results? I don't know. You go, uh, you go ahead, Austin. Free ball. Say it. Say it. Go ahead. Whatever huh. it is you think you have. Wait, say that. Say that. I don't know part again. Did you say I don't so know? What, whatever it is you, you think you have, say it. Did you say you didn't know? Whatever it is you think you have, go ahead and say it. You're afraid to say I don't know. It's not a big deal. Like, I don't know a lot of things. So anyway. Right. Or orbit is a free fall. That's not that uh, relativity helped explain that orbit is a re free fall. No, orbit is a free fall. So in general relativity, there isn't an expectation where different parts of the orbit will measure something differently in different directions. But there was an expectation prior to relativity that free fall would detect different motion. Right. Prior to relativity, orbit was not perceived as having well. Let's see. Let's be more Whoa. clear on that. Prior to relativity, it was thought that there was an absolute reference frame. Which was what? I don't know. Could have been the ether. That's what they presupposed that it could have been. Okay. So the actual answer, right, is he's saying that uh, we've tried to measure the orbit of the Earth around the sun from the Earth. And every time we try to do that, we get a negative result. And that before I put my theory together, it was difficult to become reconciled or to explain this negative result. And what his theory did to explain the result is it says that time dilates and that matter contracts. And that due to the contraction or the length shortening, right, the actual apparatus itself shortens so much so that you wouldn't be able to measure the difference in the light traveling, the light path that's perpendicular to the motion of the Earth. So because of length contraction and time dilation, which was proposed by relativity, you wouldn't, it does explain the negative results. Relativity explains that the negative results are expected because of time dilation and contraction. All right, so how, how does that help your position at all, Austin? It doesn't. Because I'll I'll read well, I'll read the the final sentence of that section of his of his paper there. Thus, for a coordinate system moving with the Earth, the mirror system of Michelson Morley is not shortened, but it is shortened for a coordinate system which is at rest relative to the Sun. So neither so that doesn't right. help you, Austin. It yeah, doesn't it does, help it, you. It doesn't it, it, establish the stationariness that you must establish. See, you're see, you're just trying to divert away, but I'll help you understand. The reason it helps me is because you and Brian sat on there for two hours and you had a bunch of the same people that are in your chat right now pretending I'm stupid. Yeah. But you didn't understand that even totally. though Lorentz contraction Completely. was originally it's postulated. Your giant with e ego, Austin. And, your and massively by the way, huge ego that does require a container. Yeah, we don't By the way, a lot of the reason there. he's interrupting is because on YouTube, they can just hear him talking over me. So he's trying to drown me out similar to what Nathan Oakley was doing, but it's whatever. So the point is that you were claiming that Lorentz contraction, I was confusing it 
with the contraction within relativity, but I was not. They are different. Lorentz proposed contraction with an ether, and he claimed that the ether actually pressed down on matter and contracted it. Now, that, that theory had lots of problems, right, because iron and wood would contract the same, and there was intermolecular problems, and they had to come up with a new electrodynamic framework to explain that, and he didn't really answer any of those questions. It had many problems, but the math worked to explain away the negative result. Now, what Einstein did was he took that math, and he took the principle of contraction. He integrated it into relativity to explain Michelson-Morley the same way, except without an ether. Okay, but none of the both. Bo what you did is you compared two models where the Earth is rotating around the the Sun and orbiting the Sun. You didn't actually establish a stationariness. None of this establishes stationariness for you, Austin. Well, I never claimed that this establishes stationariness. Okay, why would which you even try to do this, Austin? Your your challenge is to establish stationariness, but you 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 refuse to do it. You 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 avoid it at all costs. No, you never it's not touch, that I see. You never touch the actual flat Earth. You always go away from flat Earth as quickly as you can. You never want to talk about it. So funny is like your chat. Think about how dishonest you. They're saying that I'm pretentious, right? Oh, as you like, are. You have there is no now question about that, again. Austin. Now you're interrupting no me question. again. Wow. Now you're interrupting me again, bro. Right? As the entire time you have been gaslighting me and talking down to me and straw manning me the whole time and interrupting me. I'm the one that's pretentious, right? But it doesn't matter. So the point is very simple, bro, that if we're going to try to create a mechanism or an experiment to detect the motion of the earth around the sun, let's say we phrase that idea as, hmm, I wonder if the earth is stationary or I wonder if it's orbiting the sun. Well, let's try to detect the orbit of the sun. We have an apparatus that will detect two miles a second. And they claim, and we're thinking that the orbit of the, sun, of the Earth around the sun is 20 miles a second or just under. Therefore, this should be sensitive enough to detect it. So what we'll do is we'll shoot light perpendicular to the motion of the Earth. And since it's going against the motion of the Earth, it should take longer for the light to catch up to the receiver. Okay, then we went and tested it and it didn't do that it gave us the exact result that would be expected if the Earth was stationary. So all attempts to detect orbital motion have resulted in a negative result and showed us that the Earth is stationary. No, when you're trying, not negative when you're, results. When you're trying to determine not, not, if something's stationary, so when you're trying to determine if something's stationary, if you're using <laughs> measurement of motion and you get a negative result, that is what you would get if the Earth is stationary. The globe Earth claims, well, it just looks like it's stationary because time expands and slows down and matter contracts. Now, there's never been proven. It's an ad hoc explanation to keep the orbit. Length contraction cannot be proven. The very theory claims it's impossible to prove it because the entire frame of reference contracts so you could never measure and prove it contracted. So it's an ad hoc, unfalsifiable claim to explain away the results that actually show the Earth was measured to be stationary. All right, tell you what, Austin, I will allow you to never bring that up again and instead reference measurements of stationariness. How about that? This is a measurement of stationary. No, it's not. It's, it's a measurement it of, of, is it moving? <laughs> is it moving? Yes or no? Oh, we don't know. It gave us results that we can't make a conclusion from. Wait, how is this not a measurement of stationariness if it gave us a negative result trying because to detect it, motion? The word because, null is different than the word negative. Yeah, Use the word a, null instead. Really? Yeah. So, Doofus, so how would good, you measure, point. quote it's unquote, stationariness? Right. If the experiment is not designed to measure the, the, the rotation of the Earth, and it doesn't measure the rotation of the Earth, that doesn't mean the Earth is not rotating. It just means that you don't have a result that tells you whether it does or does not rotate. Oh, you can't answer. Hey, Doofus, how well, would you quote unquote you measure? Answer. Answer. No, you can't and answer. That, I cannot answer when I gave you an answer. No, you didn't answer. That was yes, called a red herring fallacy an where it has the illusion <laughs> of answering the question. Have is not yeah. establishing not whether or not rotation not is occurring. They got to you every time, the result. Every the time. answer is not that the Earth is not rotating. Grown? The answer is you don't have a test that can determine that. Grown men. It wasn't a internet, test to determine with flat Earth, orbit. 
Austin, and quit. they have to tag up Austin, and interrupt the Austin, stupid flat earther. It wasn't a test. It wasn't a test of stationariness. You need to devise a test of stationariness. That was a test of of uh, moving through the ether. Okay. The, the no result was there's no there's no moving. ether. That was the result. How do you test stationariness if nothing's moving? You got to be on a separate reference frame. Well, if you're not if you're not a, a relative. If you're not for the theory of relativity, then that's not applicable to you at all, is it? He can't answer either, right? And so just so it's you, anyone, not my, if anyone it's doesn't not know my this, place to it's solve every your time. problems. It's every single time I'm talking. If, if right, everyone doesn't know this, point. now it's like Doofus' turn to interrupt. An Dude, you this, have this to place is worse than Gail and have an answer. Because right, you guys it. just you get to interrupt the whole time. We don't have an answer Why are you interrupting me? God. So the point is that... You can't, the, the question of how do you measure stationariness is a stupid question. Well, I know, because it, it, it doesn't work for you. I mean, it's a No, you don't it's hard measure for you. It really screws stationariness. You up, yes, of course you can. You, de you create a device that's designed to measure rotation. If it comes up with zero rotation, you've measured stationariness. That's how okay, you do it. So you, so you have to be no, outside the you, earth you to do don't, it. You don't, you don't, no, you don't. You do not use a device used to measure whether or not aether exists to measure orbit. It doesn't it tell you that. If in fact, <laughs> if if you tested whether or not some some material had a sweet taste to it, if that was your instrument, if you could measure sweetness, and you used that to test whether or not salt was sweet. So again, um, it's the wrong the test. Actual, it's the wrong instrument, Austin. The, um, the actual test was to detect the motion of the Earth through the ether. It wasn't trying yeah. to measure ether. It was trying to measure the motion through a presupposed ether with the presupposed orbit, but it yes. didn't detect that motion. So every attempt to detect yes. the orbit of the Earth or to measure that movement has resulted in a negative result, which is exactly what you would get if it was stationary. And what you'd it get if it was be, rotating. It would, also be precisely, it would also be precisely what you would get if there is no such thing as motion relative to an, a reference frame known as ether. It matches uh, both, sorry, Austin. Sorry, I was talking to my wife. What'd you say? <laughs> It matches both, doesn't it? It matches both. It only matches both once you came up with the ad hoc explanation that time expands and slows down and matter contracts, so it's an illusion that the Earth which, is stationary. Which has been empirically confirmed since then. No, it has not, because yeah. the very theory itself says you could never actually measure that the length shortened because you're in the same space or reference frame that shortened. Uh, well, people have not done if you're not in that same reference and, yeah, frame. Yeah, they, they disagree with you, Austin. You can't name what, no, what they'll claim is like, look, this electron, quote unquote, went faster. Therefore, the tunnel must have shrank, but looks like it's the same size. I know I've, way more about this than you do. Pure usual. So yeah. the point is, I've, this is I've this is the deep well, position. Still well, Kennedy Thorndike, Pound Rebka. You should look at Kennedy them. Thorndike, dude. Kennedy Thorndike failed to measure the contraction. So you're just regurgitating DFE, but he gets destroyed on the regular in my emails as well. So you should find someone else to regurgitate. Dude, go, because go read it. Go ahead. Go write up your re re rebuttal to Kennedy Thorndike. I'm sure the okay. people would love. Okay, I see just that. gave it to you. Have you ever read the paper? Yes. Wait, you're lying. Your rebuttal was that it wasn't detecting anything? He's lying. That's he never rebuttal. read. Yeah, dude, literally in the paper, they concluded that they didn't detect the shortening. That's the conclusion. So how is that it, proof it's, of... Oh, it, so it, Kennedy Thorndike is measuring the, keep time, di me. time dilation. Keep interrupting me, yeah. Time your dilation. Your proof of the length contraction is that you couldn't measure the length contraction? It was measuring time dilation in Kennedy Thorndike. It was trying to measure length contraction, actually. Well, the title is Experimental Establishments of the Relativity of Time. So this, the title doesn't work very well. Hmm. Oh, uh, sorry. Say maybe again. You should, maybe you should. The I was title, talking to my wife again. The sorry. Yes, tell her to You're stop. You're boring. What tell were you her saying? to stop nagging, all right? You mean, sorry that my wife loves to talk to me, and I don't, I'm Kennedy, not a grown man that obsesses over Kennedy people I claim are stupid. Kennedy Thorndike. The actual title of the paper experimental establishment of the relativity of time it wasn't actually about 
um, length shortening. Okay, so it attempted to what what Kennedy Thorndike did was attempted to measure the length contraction. They were trying to test Lorentz's idea, and they proposed what? an entire new electrodynamic framework to do this. Weird. The and title of it is they, "Experimental Establishment of the Relativity of Time." Okay, then how is it proving <laughs> length contraction? I was giving you several different things. To- where where relativity right, has been at the confirmed. beginning of this, you asked for time dilation and length contraction. No. Now you're settling only for length contraction. No, actually, we were talking, and actually, they did an experiment where they tried to measure the shortening of the arms. So I don't know if if, if this is if I'm missing mixing them up. I doubt it because I know you haven't actually read it. Because if I asked you to describe what happened, you couldn't. And you're frantically trying to figure it out right now. But the point is that they tried to measure it's the on, length it's on my contraction, website, Austin, and I, they couldn't measure it. My summary is on measure. the website that I wrote. Yeah, you probably put stuff on there that you didn't read. That's not my problem. I have a summary that I wrote. I wrote the okay, summary. And so, it's so on my website. So this has nothing to do with length contraction then? No, it doesn't. It's time dilation. Okay, so then so then, how does it prove time dilation? <laughs> oh because God. I just watched DFE just so... say that. I just watched him say it in the chat. Right. I watched him say right, it in the conversation here. with you. Every time, interrupt me every time. I watched him invoke this exact same thing on your cover of my stream with FTFE, he invoked this as proof of length contraction, dude. And actually, he actually knew what it was, which was that it allegedly debunked Lorentz contraction with the ether, okay? And it's about the arm expected to shorten because one of the arms was a longer length, so they thought they came up with a crafty way to be able to tell if it actually shortened, and they didn't detect it, right? So that's what happened. Now, if there's a, this is a different uh, test, but I don't think it is. In this test, they, they had two different length arms, if it's the same one I'm remembering. They thought they were going to be able to show length contraction, which is intrinsically tied to time dilation, by the way. I know you got a lot of people like chanting in the chat like, they, like you're winning or I'm wrong or something. They don't understand it either, though, right? Let's be real. So if there's time dilation, then there's length contraction. Those are interconnected. Yes. So then you agree that this is where they didn't detect the length contraction. That was the result of the experiment. Yeah, let me, I'll read, I'll read you the title again. It's Experimental Establishment of the Relativity of Time. So w- explain what happened in the experiment. There, um, I, I, I can't at uh, the top of my head. I can read the summary that I wrote after I read it, which is that it's, it's uh, verifying time dilation. Oh wow! Just say it again. So yes, um, and you notice DFV. I will definitely say it again because it is not about length contraction. It is about time dilation. The title of it does give that away. It's a bit of a hint. So once again, they they had uh, different size arms in the yes. experiment. Yep. And, yeah, 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 and they expected one of them to shorten, and they actually even proposed an entire new electrodynamic framework to try to test this, okay. and they couldn't isolate contraction that was the result yeah ending, thanks for playing end, ending the poll here didn't go well for you yeah wow you have 240 zealots in the chat what a shocker look at that dude McTierney, are you All gonna right. pretend that that was some like honest like survey you just the took the question there? is like, whether or not you're people that are claiming that you're yes. winning this debate the whole time Austin, and I'm you literally just showing you you are pretentious, Austin. That's objective. You're objectively by pretentious. Vote, by a vote <laughs> on this server of 11 to 1, including Flat Earthers, yes, uh, Witsit is pretentious. Ouch. Where's the vote? It doesn't mean he's wrong. Where's the vote? He's right. Well, but, now yeah. that now that they say that, Austin, I will say, yeah, it's been kind of painful um, having to hear you have to deal with them, for sure. I just want to remind you, uh-huh. uh, MC Toon, for sure, he's he told us the other day that he doesn't stand behind anything that he says from previous days. You know what I mean? He incorrectly defined impedance earlier. I don't know if you caught that. And uh, also... He resistance. Yeah. Yeah, it's resistance. What, no, what? it's literally not. That's why it's a different word. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, that's... It's, it's, Ohm's, it's resistance Ohm's, of is a, Ohm's is measurement of resistance, but that's okay. Uh, also, I just want to know... I just want to know, can you clarify, do you agree with Doofus that the measurement of the sun's movement during the day is a mean calculation, meaning non-consistent? 
yeah, to, to the level of precision necessary, you can, you can find variation in, in all measurements, of course. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Now, also, you is also well, measured what's it? You in claim ohms. in your so when he said earlier that, that, so when he said earlier that, uh, Resistance is measured in ohms. It's worth mentioning also impedance is also measured that in ohms. That is true. Yeah. yeah, they're both measured in ohms, but they're not the same thing. But no. impedance, yeah. in, impedance includes reactance. Yeah, thank you. Uh -huh. Like they're different. Like impedance is like uh, voltage divided by current or something. Like that. So this is the point, though. That is that free <laughs> space has impedance. And it's an electric and magnetic constant. But anyway, DFV yeah, is now in the chat saying, but what's it? You, impedance is for AC, not DC. But what's it? You claim in uh, your talk that there is length contraction. And I've literally never claimed that there is length contraction. And so it's just for the audience, you should wonder, like, if this flat earth is so stupid, then, like, why do they always have to lie about what I say? Oh, yeah, that was the other thing. Well, you, I mean, you, you, you clearly earlier, were going we into depth. We don't have any time dilation. I'm sorry, I was speaking doofus. Thank you. You clearly were going into depth about that, uh, yeah, whatever you were just talking about, the, the experiment. And all he had to say was, well, let me read you the title. I think four times that's all his rebuttal was. Like, let me just read you the title of this. He had no in-depth knowledge of anything that you were talking about, clearly. Because right, Witsit kept talking yeah. about length. It was about time. But the actual experiment tested length, doofus. It doesn't matter what the title said. In the, in the actual experiment, they had two different length arms, and they wanted to see if one was going to contract, and then they found out they couldn't detect contraction. Fifth time I've said that. Now, you're not going to respond again. But I'm getting destroyed. I'm so pretentious. Oh, man. Thanks for the clip. Yeah, well, I wouldn't let you them get that is. That awesome. They're, uh, I don't you know what it is. Like, think about how lame it is to be like a grown man and be like, oh man, I can take off sound of context and clip him out and make a music video. I mean, I think that's a loose term, grown man, but I mean, to be a Dude, grown I'm 13. man. Don't, don't 20, put that on me. 2022, believing that the earth is spinning beneath your feet, I think it is kind of hilarious. Well, even if it was, if the earth was like a spinning ball revolving around in a vacuum, tilted, wobbling, and all this stuff, right? It's like super What's weird. What's the wobble? What's that you would be Austin? like obsessed with flat what's earthers Austin, what's for the years. What's the wobble? You didn't know that your model explain claims the earth wobbles? Explain, explain the wobble. Yeah. How much? What's the magnitude? Uh, it's of the not wobble? very much. That's a, that's irrelevant. Okay. How much is it? Not very much. I don't remember. It's like very, very small amount. <laughs> okay. So you put right. wobbling as if like it's a big thing that's happening, huh? Well, it is. Act your oh no! Wait, or were you just yeah. were you just quoting Dubé because he always says wobble? No, your model claims it wobbles. I didn't even know Dubé says that. I've barely watched any Dubé. Uh, every sure. every six to fourteen years, it wobbles twenty to sixty inches. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, the 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 Chandler wobble is not very much, but it does wobble. So, yeah, I just I because because I was just checking. I'm curious because a lot of people think and and Globers do that uh, that there's an annual wobble of of uh, the causes the, the seasons but it's that's not what it is so wow no that's the tilt the 23 by 40 yeah, tilt, right but I, the parallel I say, sun rays and your path around the sun Sorry, absolutely God. but there are there's a lot of people including globers that think that the earth does wobble annually the entirety of that that 23 degrees uh i saw i saw a news article a news up you know on tv where people are like, you can balance an egg on the equinox because the Earth's wobble is neutralized on the equal. Like, holy crap, that's so wrong. Yeah, so, okay, I guess we've proven that um, uh, you guys can't actually debate. Uh, but I would say is next time, bro, when you do a video covering me, try not to lie so much. Like one lie you said sure, was sure, I Austin. show the magnetic flux and then I show the weather pattern to pretend they're like the same thing because it looks different. On oh, yeah, done yeah. My whole life. you refused yeah. To show the actual version of that same thing on on the globe, you didn't want it because it no, it it's makes not that I refuse. It, it, no, it has nothing to do with refusing. I don't care to show that. And then you also you, you show that it, it spins. Work. Like everyone knows it spins, but it's like at the top and bottom that it starts to get shoddy, as opposed to a flat Earth uh, that stays yeah. consistent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Except so it completely that was a works lie that you because told. I've seen, I've seen, I've seen, uh, maybe not you. Of but course it's not me, so you're lying about Bob, it. Probably Bob, where where it's it's you have the, the, the flat earth version where everything's going just in circles, and then they have the globe version where there's all sorts of vortices. Like as if it's the same one, which isn't the case at all. 
No, they don't know. Bob's never shown that, right? Because you can oh, look at the weather. Oh, I know exactly and... what you're talking about. Yeah, you've seen that. I mean, that's everywhere. You guys are the that's worst like the, people. That's, they man. love that. I feel meme. bad for you guys. So yeah, you're uh, you being lied about me and again. said that I did that. It's, it's... You lied about me and said I did that. You lied and said that I cl I didn't even know where the quote came from, and I claimed that it came from somewhere in 1952. That's a lie. I already you already lied and I already rescinded that. Go, go ahead, live in the past. I know I'm I'm, I'm pointing out how much you lie. Right. You didn't lie and said that I didn't understand that it was different than Lorentz contraction within the ether, and that I kept talking about the ether but didn't understand it. But the truth is, this conversation has shown very clearly that you were wrong. That entire stream and relativistic length contraction does apply to Michelson Morley and does claim that the arm shortened, just that the entire frame of reference also shortened, so you weren't able to detect the actual shortening. That is uh, objectively what your position claims relative to the motion of the orbit. So you lied for a whole hour chanting about how wrong I was about that, but actually you were wrong. I've shown that you cannot answer the question about the Machian principle, honestly. I've shown that you cannot actually address that relativity says you can't detect the motion of the Earth around the sun from the Earth. And I've shown that you can't answer the question of, well, what did relativity do to reconcile the negative results, even though I told you the answer, and that you repeatedly revert back to a straw man about uh, MGP, which is about rotation, and then you have a talking point about how to talk in the future and make claims that he, he made claims about stuff in the future, which I did not. So the question is, why, if I'm so stupid and easily disproven, then you would not have to do that, right? Like, why would you have to lie about what I say in straw man? Right. All right, good, good monologue. I'll, I'll do my wrap up here. Austin, you don't have any evidence for flat Earth. You don't have any evidence that the Earth is stationary, so you must never, 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 never talk about it because you will always, every single time any claim is made about the shape of the Earth being flat and it's tested, it fails every time. Thank you, everybody. It's been good. Yeah, so thank you, everybody, for realizing that the default position is that the Earth is stationary topographic. The default plane, position is the Earth is rotating. And a, a negative result. Thank you can you, just, you can't just declare it. something yeah. to be the d default. I'll well, declare the way, same thing. This is way more fun than we planned, right? Most Very impromptu. I just want to say the one, the one last thing one more time. Like I, I'll um, say the same thing. Go ahead. I just I'm going to say, say one the last default thing one more position. Time. The default position. No, no, no. Right? Calm down, man. It's oh, okay. No, it's okay, it. bro. Yeah. You'll still get your super chats from the anti flat earth through Zealot. It's going to be fine. So. Um, all I'm saying is that, of course, when we try to detect the motion of the Earth going around the sun, we never are able to do that. It's always a negative result, which is, of course, Wrong. what you would get, which is, of course, what you would get if it wasn't moving around the sun. So what relativity and the current heliocentric model claims is that since time dilates and slows down and matter contracts, you would never be able to. And basically, it's a stubbornly persistent illusion that makes you think that the Earth is stationary, makes it look like the Earth is stationary, but actually it's not. It's just the universe playing a trick on you by strength or by uh, shortening all the links of the matter. All right, I'll do my wrap up then and say that there are many ways to measure the orbit of the Earth around the sun other than the one that Austin continuously focuses on. Um, <clears throat> so, but thank he just you, can't name them. I already did. No, you didn't like it. You didn't like it. You you must have missed it. <laughs> and if McToon's saying there are ways to directly measure the Earth's orbit around the sun, then he's claiming relativity is incorrect, but he's too incompetent to grasp what relativity actually says, not, so he projects his own intellectual Again, ineptitude onto no, me. No result. No result. That's it. All right. All right I'm going to head out. Playing, man. It was fun. Thank you. Thank cool. you, Austin. Uh, thank you, everybody. I'm going to stick around on my uh, live stream, so um, it's Mike, been fun. Shane, thanks for hosting. Thanks for coming by, McToon. All right. We'll see you. Yeah. All right, people. Whew. There we go. That was a trip. I didn't. I didn't know if Austin was going to show up. That was. Uh, that was great. I'm going to have to read through a few of these things. Of course, I wasn't able to integrate them live because uh, you know can't quite do that. I got a couple. I got a couple in. So let me read it. We got Lael says too, and ask him if you can see too far. How is how far is too far? The sun is farther away than 50 miles, and we can still see that. How far is too far? They never want to talk about that. Oh, they don't like it. Um, of course, the sun is one thing. The stars are even farther than the sun for the flat earthers with the dome and all that. And they're like, you can't see the sun because it's too far away. It went out of your perspective. Well, then how can you see the stars that are farther away? It doesn't make sense. Not at all. 
NANA says spieling words con oh man correct tally don't matters flat earthers because it's cloaks and enough my goodness that was hard to read NANA thank you for that though Cretan Bull says Effie I'm not good at math <laughs> yeah we know I didn't want to say too much but yeah flat earthers aren't good at math with the, just a couple exceptions seriously I, just a few like like mind of god but he says that the earth appears to be spherical and god is lying that's his position a weird a weird thing which which hey this is this is good dan quail it's spelled potato he spelled sorry potato with an oe at the end it says tell everyone how you think the world could be flat and your god could be tricking globers so that goes right to mind of god's claim <clears throat> so uh dan quail it's spelt potato with an e said uh asked me in a comment could god make the earth appear flat even though it's spherical um and that's a question of the form can omnipotent being do and then something anything provided that that anything is a logical consistent thing right can can God make a rock that he cannot move is logically inconsistent. So can God do something? Can, can omni omnipotent being do any? Yes. That the answer to that is yes. But like, like the critique to mind of God is why would God do that? That makes him a deceiver. So that is out of context, out of character. So it doesn't seem right. It doesn't seem that the case, but maybe everybody's wrong. Maybe, and, and it's, and it's kind of goes back to the simulation theory. Maybe everything looks like a globe, but it's in a simulation theory. Therefore it looks different. Like how, how, how does that, it's not a thing, right? Because you, you can't test it. It's not empirical. It's outside of falsifiability, not something we can test. So it's not science. So many Karen says, can God make a burrito so hot he can't eat it? There it is. So, uh, Dan Quayle, it's spelled potato. He's a funny guy. Um, he's he seems a bit angry. And if you if you know Dan Quayle, it's spelled potato with an O E. The reason why he has that, you'd have to go back to when Dan Quayle was vice president back uh, in the late eighties, early nineties. Um, so it kind of dates this guy, this Dan Quayle. It's spelled potato. Um, he's you know, I don't know how old, how old is he? If, if that's his thing, I don't know. Um, so, all right, I get back to it. Tim Pryor says, whenever they bring up black swan, you should automatically have the other picture where the oil rig is hidden. Yeah, I should, I should just have that ready to go. That'd be good. But you know that their script, they have a script that QE uh, gifted to all of them where they're like, well, you can't bring up the white swan um and and <laughs> what's funny is they don't like the modus tollen for doing science they don't think that that's a proper way to construct a hypothesis remember they've redefined they've defined something which is basically the polar opposite of science and they've put that in and called it science right they talk about proof which science doesn't claim to do they they reject even using the the basic if if p then q stance of of a uh, of a hypothesis chapters three and four in here, um, um, and and they reject it, but then they go and use it, which is perfectly valid science. It's great science if p then q in, but of course you need to take into account confounding variables, which they never want to do. They never want to do that. But of course, when, I find it funny when, I, when I'm like, well, I measured the radius of the Earth using an Eratosthenes style measurement. They're like, well, did you include refraction? Well, in fact, I did. It doesn't do much. It certainly doesn't help your position. But I did include refraction. It added 0 0.03 degrees of elevation to the sun. So the sun was uh, appeared to be 0 0.03 degrees higher. It doesn't help. 
making distant objects appear slightly higher doesn't help. You need the sun to appear drastically lower for it to help you. So, uh, Kareem Ghost said, you get mad, too mad sometimes. I want to see you cooler. Oh, yeah. Dude, I'm talking to Whitson. I got, I got excited. Um, <clears throat> It depends, you know, sometimes, sometimes I get excited. Sometimes I don't, uh, it kind of depends on the person I suppose that I'm talking to. So, all right. A Andreas Eld says seashell sh shellish, she sellish on the she sore. Yes. It goes back to NASA and Nasha being distinctly different words, just like shell and sell are distinctly different words. And just because they're similar doesn't mean they have some relationship to each other. So, <laughs> again, Dan Quayle, polar opposite of science, MC Tune's be baseless belief in a god, uh, then his baseless belief on how it acts, which he just used. Yeah, it, it's, you could say it's baseless. It's it's not, but you, fine. It's I'm fine with you saying it's baseless. It's, it's faith. People of faith have faith. It should not surprise you. And, and again, go read this. This is, this, it's a big book. You, um, but he, he talked at length. It was about removing metaphysical things from science. It was part of the reason why he did that. Um, the logical positivists of, of the Austrian circle also did the same types of things. They, they, they got all these things out of the way about metaphysical stuff that people were trying to put into science. So, it's not, it's not how it works. So anyway, uh, yeah, Dave Kirshner, I, I read, did read this one. Who sets the two drink minimum on these discord debates? My goodness. I've heard Michael J. Smith a few times. He always sounds drunk. I, maybe that's just how he sounds. Um, <laughs> he always sounds drunk. So, all right. Um, we got Eddie Reese has a $5 super sticker. This is critical hit. Thank you for that. Uh, t t oh, darn. <laughs> uh, Takas Janos, which I'm sure was mispronounced for um, 1,024 hops, which I believe is, is a Hungarian uh, currency, has some letters in Turkish, some words in Turkish, which I certainly could not pronounce. Uh, Kursuk Kur Baga. I'll paste it into chat. You can, you tell me, you tell me what you thought. Um, th that anyway, so in Turkish means small frog to a Hungarian ear. It sounds like stupid whore. What does that prove? Exactly. That NASA is an abbreviation made by people that are not Jews. Didn't probably even know any hebrew at all maybe some of them did but my guess is probably not and maybe and maybe some of them involved in the decision making were jews i don't, I don't know um, but in the end it, it's an acronym for for something else and it means to lift up so it doesn't help no matter what you do dave kirchner says if you're taking suggestions can you run the uh Polygonal Earth thought experiment, overall spherical with localized observations being flat. Well, that's kind of the uh, the the globe here. This the um, let me see. Can I point better? I need to get my head out of the way. There it is. That's kind of this globe here, the Lego globe. Um, the thought experiment. Okay, because mass attracts mass, it's going to collapse things into a, a roughly spherical shape, depending on the quantity of mass the materials made up and how much it's rotating because centrifugal force will cause it to um, elongate. Um, so a, uh, uh, many flat surfaces, depending on how big they are, right? Of course, it's, it's possible to construct something that, that is, is flat to whatever precision you want to do that to. Um, you have to fight against gravitational forces to make that happen, but it's possible depending on how, how large and your budget, right? <clears throat> Dave Kirschner comes back and says, when I've had too many drinks, my, perce my perception is that the earth spins around me. Absolutely. <laughs> DFE. Bryant, P uh, Bryant Myers. I want to say Peterson. I don't know why Peterson. Bryant Myers. 
I'd only started today. Sorry, Bryant says the elephant in the flat earth room is we are still we is we are getting whole earth images from Artemis along with live feeds of ISS and images from Himawari and goes every 10 to 15 minutes. It is. And all they can say is nah. -uh. That's it. That's it. Man Devil says, Robert McNeil saw the demon behind your eyes. You need to be more careful on live streams. <laughs> Was that somebody in the in the uh, the Discord? Because <laughs> these these religious flirts, they think it's a they think that ba little baby Jesus in the manger wants the earth to be flat. <laughs> it's you just go measure it. If you have a real, if you're like the, 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 a holy book says this and it's your interpretation of it, or if it's undeniable, oh, somebody in here, if, if it's an uninterpretable thing, if it just very clearly states something that doesn't make it right. If you go measure it and determine it's different than that, it makes it wrong. Flat earthers that say that the Bible claims that the earth is flat are just saying that the Bible is wrong. That's all they're doing. So, <clears throat> all right. Um, RT96 says, I, INB4 is down an option or closed system. Oh, is down an open or closed system. It, oh, INB4. Yes. So that was SE Montreal. Because, yeah, because SE Montreal doesn't understand elementary school geometry. He, he, it, he cannot comprehend. What an absolute moron. Poor guy. I mean, he, he just is, is just. It's hard to want to fathom that somebody can be that stupid. I'm, I'm not, this isn't an ad hum. This isn't an insult. This is an assessment. It's really, really dumb to think what he thinks that that somehow it's an argument to say that you started on the surface of the earth you go through you pass the middle and on the other side of middle down is now pointing towards the middle still on that side of the middle it's here on this side of the middle it's here that's not a problem he thinks somehow that's it that's the thing and of course he really didn't want the map to be put on him you know why so every time you test the map, it fails. Every single map that's ever been proposed fails. Tiger Dan. And I, so I still need the Tiger Dan videos. I will send you a Toonies mug if you can find the original Tiger Dan videos. That's it. I, I think I talked about it last week. I, there's a guy that did a, a video on it and covered some of his and so of course that guy has downloaded them i sent him an email he didn't respond so i mean he may not be actively checking that email account anymore so yeah se was painful s s oh uh was this again the server where democ resides yes gaudens raber it was but i i have personally muted him so i don't hear him talk um I would, I'm happy to have him, if he, if he challenges, if he demands a debate with me, I'll happily have a one-on-one -on, -one on here, but he's, he's just a random derp generator. He's like, you need to, you need to make a rocket go sideways and you need to do this and you need to do this and you need to, and these ideas he has are insanely fun to think about. They're so crazy. I, I love his ideas because they're so insane. Right. I don't know how he comes up with these these ideas, but they're fantastically crazy. Um, he thinks that 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 he that people it is it's in <laughs> other people than him must bore a hole through the earth at a diagonal angle so that you can be on one side of it and look in at nighttime for them and see daytime for where it comes out of the earth on the other side. He thinks that is a necessity. How? How is that a thing? There's other ways to figure out the shape of the earth. All right. Mr. QTube, first name, Fa, 
says for five dollars mc tune live your first mistake in explaining up and down was asking a flurf to think I'll, I'll say there are some that understand it at least that right it, it's it's I don't remember who said it, but something about, and I'm sure people could remind me, to be able to put yourself in somebody else's position and think from their position is is a, a an important part of critical thinking. Can you think about how the globe works as a flat earther? You should, because you can't debunk the globe without first understanding the globe. You can't debunk flat earth without first understanding flat earth, right? They say this is the map. Well, let's test it. Oh, well didn't work they say it's it's not this map okay which map is it oh you don't have a map well that's a failure too that's an even worse failure than testing a map that didn't work you're so much of a loser that you don't even have a map you think the earth is flat and you don't and you can't even compute the consequences of that claim uh oh i love this earth is life says for five dollars so hilarious how witsit has to reassure himself that he's winning the debate by claiming he's destroying you or that you're scared Yes, and that's one of his constant tactics. It's, you know, you should, a lot of people think that having positive affirmations of you, you, to yourself is, an, is good. You, a lot of people say them internally, right? Um, oh, what was Saturday Night Live? I'm, I'm good enough, I'm smart enough, and doggone it, people like me. <laughs> anyway, oh, Dan Quayle. Dan Quayle got timed out. Why are you so angry, Dan Quayle? I think it's fun. I think you're funny. Um, I, I, I don't know. You don't need to time him out. He wasn't being. He wasn't being. Um, that that comment was was. I mean, it was kind of dumb. But geez. I what? There's two things that I've gone through in this this Dan Quayle. It's spelled potato guy. That either. He's just really bitter about something. He's just an old bitter man. I don't know. That's my one idea that, you know, if, if he's got the, this Dan Quayle reference, he probably was, you know, maybe he was in his 30s when Dan Quayle was was vice president. So he's like 60 or 70 now. And he's just a bitter old lonely man. Maybe. I don't know. If I'm wrong, Dan Quayle, correct me. Or, or he's a flat earther that's just butthurt. And he's 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 poing as an as an atheist um, to to do this. I, it could be I don't know. He, tell me, there's a there's a good there's a good poll, and and I want I want to see I want to see um, Dan. I want you to to, to do this. Um, uh, is Dan Quayle? Ooh, I got to spell that right. Oh, I got a kitty. All right. Pause the poll writing to show Raccoon. Hey, Raccoon. Right here. There she is. She's so, she's tiny. She's a little kitty. A little kitty. Look at her. And the other one, Turtle, he's a big kid. All right. Oh, here comes Turtle. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Like, you, you, you can... <laughs> he doesn't like to be held upside down, but he'll let you. There you go. There, he's a good kitty. He'll come and lay on you all night long because he wants to assert his dominance. All right. That's only on you. Oh, only on me? Okay. Don't let. Oh, don't shut him in. Okay, good. Um, is Dan Quayle um angry? <laughs> angry old. angry old atheists for real i mean i don't have a i really i'm not much of a problem with atheists i'm just a, um or a butthurt po a butthurt flurf poing all right there it is and while i do that i'll get back to uh to the stuart christmas for 2898 singaporean dollars uh, says, I lived in the south of France until age six because my dad was a sh chief engineer on the Concorde. I was one of the, um, hold on, one of the first, 
Vertigo, one of the first people to have the privilege of flying on her. Guess what? It's round. Oh, and Lloyd says hi. Yes, Stuart Christmas, Lloyd's brother. Thank you for that. I didn't know that. That's a, that's a fantastic story. Any pictures, Stuart, would be really cool, of course. Uh, then he comes back again, Stuart Christmas, Lloyd's brother, says it tried to drive to work this morning, but turns out I didn't build the car myself. And darn it, the damn thing wouldn't start. Guess you have to build everything yourself for it to work. <laughs> I've had that problem with cars. Earthrise as a member for 18 months says, what does your model predict, Austin? Oh, their model predicts, let's talk about the globe instead. <laughs> right? Um, Waikiki Moose Cow says, Austin Gamma Boy gets it. You have nothing until you can explain where the sun sleeps at night. Have you not heard him? He... He piles on. He's like, he comes up with all of the different things and puts them together in a bundle of poo. Right? He says, he says, um, um, he says light extinction, inverse square law, um, occlusion in the at atmospheric occlusion, um, all these for why the sun appears to set. Um, Perspective, of course. I think he says that. I'm not sure if he says perspective. But like he gives this list of things like, okay, well, if it was light extinction or inverse square law or a atmosphere conclusion, well, then the the sun would fade out well above the horizon. And you couldn't ever see the stars, for yeah. sure. Okay, good night. Wanna give me five? Or on knuckle. Right here. They want to see. There it is. All right. There was. <laughs> she she's a little little camera shy. And I just noticed. I, I've been painting. Um, I'll put I'll put some pictures of what I've been painting on the Discord server, people, if you want to see. Um. All right. David Lee says for five dollars, witless. You don't know a reference frame from a door frame. I'll, I'll give you that. Here's Robert McNeil. Um, intellect. Don't, don't time him out. Don't block that. I want to, I want those to be there forever. I want Robert McNeil's comments to be in the chat forever. So years from now, when Robert McNeil is like, what the hell was I thinking about? Why did I think that? That was so wrong. I'm so embarrassed. And he wants to to scrub the internet of all references that he thought the earth was flat. I want it still to be here. Okay, so don't don't delete those. Don't block them, right? I want them forever, indelibly recorded. I mean, it's part of the live chat. It comes to the side, but you know what I mean, right? I want that. So don't, don't take that away. Um... <clears throat> Uh, albino bad guy. I was watching an old debate of yours. Forgot who, but they said the sun does the Pac-Man thing. That was Awake Souls. Jason Laufenberger, I think. I I might have gotten the last name wrong. PJ Cnet would know. It's his Papa Flurf. Um, yeah, the the their map is is uh. Well, I don't. I didn't print it out, but it's it's sideways, and so it goes off this way, and it goes off this way, and it, the sun comes back around. It does this wavy thing. It's crazy. He, he was so excited for it. He loved it. David Lee comes back and says, Witless, you would have more room. You would need to have more than a sixth grade education to talk about grown up topics like relativity. Yep. <laughs> he's he's read some of these things. He has. It, it, he, he doesn't. None of it helps. Him, right. Because he doesn't quite understand that. When you have a device designed to measure one thing, it doesn't mean when it doesn't measure that, that it, that it, something else was also measured, that it wasn't designed to measure. It's, he can't get that through his head. So, uh, Serena News One says Austin's nothing burger has 10 to the negative 17 calories. Saeed Ahmed says Bravo for, ha for handling wits it that way. He has no interest in flat earth. 
He just wants to flex and act like the smartest guy in the room. Oh yeah, that is him all the time. He's constantly posturing in, in every debate. He's, he's, he's doing his, his affirmations, right? So that he feels good about, about what he's doing. Um, he has no evidence, so he has to run from it. David Lee, wits it, witless. What is impedance? Yeah, so somehow impedance causes motion there to make motion happen here. I don't know. Um, so, but he's like, oh, the impedance proves something else. Sorry. The, the existence of impedance doesn't necessarily establish what that something else is. You need to establish what that something else is through something other than just there being impedance. Did Austin know that impedance is resistance to AC? Like, the same as... I don't know. Tell me in the chat here. Do you think that he... <laughs> impedance is not a force... Do you think that he knew that impedance was, you know, AC resistance? Um, tell me in the chat. I, I, I had to do an awful lot of circuits. Circuit, oh, so many circuit diagrams. Got old. It got old. Um, I haven't done them for quite a few years. Um, and when I when I did design the uh, the crossovers that I haven't touched in four years at least. Um, I didn't do the work myself. I used software to do the, to do the work, to design the, the crossovers. Still haven't built them. It's sitting on software that ran on old windows. It was on an XP, a Windows XP virtual machine on my 2010 Mac Pro Intel, which I still have. I use every day, right? Uh, um. Um, but my main computer is a, a, a new laptop. Um, but I'm pretty sure I could not launch that VM again. <laughs> I'd have to update VMware and not update the operating system, which that's not a problem. I can't update that operating system anymore. Anyway, that'd be fun. I should, I should definitely do that and export it, but you know, when I, before I can't, before that computer completely, you know, freezes. Um, <clears throat> Ableist says, Flurf tries to sound intelligent by spewing scientific sounding words, creating a word salad of epic proportions, and his minions drool over his vomit. They do. In the, um, go to the, the, the comment section of the debate on Modern Day Debate from last Thursday. Um, <clears throat> and people are saying similar things, and then Flat Earthers are like, well, that's just because you don't understand it. So I asked one of them, I said, well, what specifically could you explain in your own words what Witsit meant when he said, and then something is that, well, I understood the majority of it. Oh, okay. Well, he spent the majority of his time on this. Could you explain in your own words this since you understand it? And he, he came back, honestly, kudos to him, said he didn't, he couldn't understand it. So good for him on that. <clears throat> Uh, <laughs> Timbo Turtle must be a sailor. You're using a boat anchor as a computer. Uh, well, it was when it was new, it was quite something, but yeah, it, it's in 2010. It was, uh, it, it had, uh, dual, dual CPUs, Intel CPUs, um, as 24 threads of execution in 2010 and, uh, 64 gigs of Ram and a one terabyte SSD. I drive six monitors off of it. So <clears throat> it was a nice machine. It, it, that thing rocked when it was new. And, um, our boss, he'd, he'd come around every once in a while. Like, do you want to upgrade? Like, no, these, the, these other Mac, no, nope, 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 nope. So, but the, the laptop, that's pretty nice. String news once says Austin does the worst version of who's on first. Dirk Christmas uh, about uh, his PhD in high precision interferometry, and this is just painful. We all know both spectroscopy and interferometry needs a container. And Austin actually, 
That's a joke. That last sentence is a joke. Austin actually tried to to support Dirth's claim about spectroscopy needing a container. It does not. It does not. Oh my god. I mean, not a physical container. They constantly go on that. Austin picked that up from his Papa Flurf, Nathan Oakley, which who I have right here, Nathan Oakley, right? Um, his the 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 natural antecedent to gas pressure is a container. Where is that uh, established in the annals of science? Nowhere. It's just his assertion. Fit. They 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 specifically mean physical container. I'll agree with you if a force is a container. Absolutely, force is a container. It does contain the atmosphere. The downward accelerating force does that. Rick Sanchez, member for 19 months, says, Wits it, there's a village missing its idiot. Many Karen for 15 shekels says, People complaining about Austin's derp too fast to follow, so the mods put him in slow mode. He was in slow mode tonight. And that's why I asked if, <laughs> if people thought he was drunk. Because he's a little... Yeah, it's a little slower than usual, so I, I kind of thought maybe that was it. Um, I have had him on drunk before. He called in mu I, much more drunk than he was tonight, if he was. I don't know if he was, but um, I could tell. <laughs> when it's in your ear, coming right out of Zoom, it's like there's, it's a little different. It's not going, it's not getting rebroadcast. Rick Sanchez then comes again, says, Witsit, your elevator doesn't go all the way to the top, does it? I'll say he's not, he's not the, the there's dumb flurfs and there's smart flurfs. There's a spectrum, a tiny little spectrum of the, the bottom point zero 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 one percent of intelligent people. There's still a spectrum down there. It's a gradient of intelligence. And Austin is towards the top of that gradient. I'll say that. Right. And, and, and SE Montreal on the opposite side. So, <clears throat> uh, the misanthrope says, Austin, my telescope mount tells me the earth is a globe. Is it lying to me? He's just going to talk. What is he? He's going to say, you presuppose. It's, it's a, it's a reification foul. He doesn't go on that one, does he? <laughs> um, all right. Alyssum says, hey, what's it? Why is all navigation based on the globe? Feel free to provide us with functional flat earth based alternatives to Haversign. Ooh, that's never going to happen. That's never going to happen. Re... Jared for $20. Thank you very much for that. Says Witsit is smart enough to know by now that the earth is a sphere. He's just a bellicose contrarian that wants his position to be challenged, to challenge what people believe, and he wants to be respected. If that's the case, you, you, yeah, you, you, you could, yeah. There is an argument to be made for that position. Um, that makes him a pathological liar. Right or a um, maybe not a path pathological liars believe their own stuff. See, I think he believes his own stuff. I think it started out being a contrarian because he is definitely a contrarian. You, you look at well, the first time I talked to him, he he said he went to college. He's and and got in arguments with his his professors. That's why he dropped out. Yeah. You don't know, Austin. You don't understand these topics, and you think you do, right? And your professors did, and you were wrong, and they were right. Certainly, there are things that everybody gets wrong. And certainly, when you're teaching at a 100 level, you don't introduce 400 level topics, right? You have to build up to it. You have to get to the point. So you don't start talking about relativity when you're talking about, you know, kinematics equations and measuring the the downward acceleration you don't need you don't do that right you you in high school you you apply the kinematics to get the downward acceleration you don't you don't get into relativity except unless you really want to until probably you know masters or or phd level type stuff so you got to get there um okay um What's it? All right. Two A H D cat says uh what's it? I'm not gonna say shame on you. Doesn't get it and will never change. And he's still mad at Thompson's no longer his fiance. 
Oh. Austin, so there's a few videos on Austin's channel that he has, uh, that are no longer there. The ones with him and Thompson, they're gone. They gone. But the archive that I found has them. So they're still there and I downloaded them. So, um, <clears throat> so poor guy, uh, Alyssa says, tune, how do you deal with these people respect uh, um well uh, nasa sends sends uh these good for, good for that helps it helps many karen says can god make a burrito so hot he can't eat it yep <laughs> love that um serena is one i wonder if mind of god's god carries a pitchfork and and that is that is within the realm of abrahamic religions God isn't the one doing those, saying those lies. So within, which is what, you know, where he sits. Um, so it's inconsistent, though it doesn't make sense. Elizabeth says, Flurfs don't understand that you can have faith um, and from your view of reality on science. Flurfs don't understand that you can have faith and from your view of reality on science. I Did I miss that? Was it, was there a mis, mistype in there? Um, you can have faith on science. I don't, I don't understand, but yes. I'm not sure what you're saying, Alyssa, I'm sorry. So read Jared for $20 again. Thank you again for that. It says Witsit is like a chess player that knows he's wrong and could never win a match. But as long as he can knock out a few of his opponent's chess pieces, he can somehow prove his intellect. You can tell it's personal. I have some uh, ideas on uh, maybe his uh, his um, when he was a kid, how it might have been. I don't know. I would I wouldn't say them here, but I I, I worked with high schoolers for many years as a volunteer and uh, some some troubled and i see a lot of the same things in some of the kids i worked with in austin and i know those situations and there's a couple a couple you know guesses i could put together for you know what the situation was that brought him to where he is and uh could be right could be wrong earth is life there it is uh, again uh witsit reassures himself that he's winning debate by claiming it's destroyed or that you're too scared the misanthrope says, I knew a former YouTube po a YouTube pilot. He says Earth is round. That's cool. He flew that band around for a while. Hmm. The Joshua tree. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I can't name any more U2 songs <laughs> or albums. It would have been funnier if I could. Anyway, Matt Patak says, love learning about geometry and physics I forgot years ago as much as laughing about flurfs. Absolutely. It, I have definitely covered topics that I would not have otherwise covered. Next week, I'm talking to a, a reality, a guy that, that, that doesn't support relativity. Um, so that's not a debate. That's just a talk. I can't really... Uh, the the level that he's at it's a, it's a it's a high level i can't do but certainly if somebody watches and is like hold on a second i do have that position of relativity where i can address it he's he he uh today we talked a little bit and i think he might be open to having a more in-depth kind of back and forth than what i can do so um and the final one johnny rotten for two dollars says wits it throws chocolate soft serve emoji against a wall to see what sticks he does he does he he i like that that is definitely what he's over time i, I mean i brought up that two years ago he talked about tesla's view on gravity he doesn't talk about that anymore it didn't stick to the wall his uh his uh curve stuff the black swan that he he just he couldn't not talk about it he hasn't said anything on that for a while um, because it's from Oakley and QE and he's on the outs with them. So 
There you go. Uh, the Joshua Tree and Zuropa were a bunch of pants. Humble opinion. A bunch of pants. Okay. I don't know what that even means, we Jaronism. Uh... All right, so I was going to have a, uh, a call-in show um, two hours ago. <laughs> I'm obviously, that's not happening. Um, I will, I will do that a different time. So that one I will, um, I will, I'll, right now I'll go and uh, tear that live stream down. So what did you think? I, I, um. my position, what, what about with C he 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 has to never talk about flat earth so instead he talks about what he talks about the globe that's the standard thing he asserts that that um it's it's so dishonest when they they assert that flat earth is the default that is completely an asinine position completely just because you think whatever doesn't mean that's de the default position because i can say all the same things every single thing i can say just replace globe stuff for flat earth stuff and then assert that it's the default position right and i would be more i would be more um justified in that position because like i mentioned the lincoln douglas debates the, the person that has the position that is contrary to the, the generally accepted position is the one that has the burden of evidence. They need to go first. They're on the offensive and the other people are on the defensive. So to be honest, in a debate, as, as a globe proponent, I don't have the burden. The default position is the globe. Now, I do not need that. I don't, right? I can simply reference... All of the evidence for the globe and i have a short list of it already on my website mctune.net slash burden the burden of evidence has been met so take all that flat earthers mctune.net slash burden all of those things on there is the burden now you have the burden to refute it they don't do that they never want to do that um all right i can't i can't hold on a second just a second, Matt Patak. I love Patak. It sounds very Klingon. It sounds very Klingon. So, all right, I'm about to. Here goes. There it is. The November call-in show. Delete forever. I understand that deleting is permanent. Can't be undone. Boom. Okay, there it is. Let me go back to this. And um, Matt Patak says, in 82 Tron... Why were the bad red programs in blue bikes while the two good programs and Flynn were red slash gold bikes? On the game 2D grid, Flurf Evidence. It's as good as they get. Oh, I just looked up, I just looked up the um um the Tron ascension or whatever it's going to be oh, it, disney disney's like um they don't want to do the next tron because tron uh in 2010 had uh, it grossed uh 400 million dollars and disney's like well we only do blockbusters it needs to be more than a billion it's profitable but it's not profitable enough i kind of the idea so all right is dan quail butthurt flurf poeing 78 percent or angry old atheist for real, 21%. Okay, Ed, I would have voted the other way myself. So, anyway. <laughs> M. Stone says, Disney is hurting. <clears throat> Could be. I don't know. Didn't look at their stuff. So, people. That was a lot of fun. Um, thank you for joining. Thank you for 475 of you being here. I'm going to wrap it up. <clears throat> So, you know, the next outro will be new. You've seen it before. You've seen it a year ago. So, there it is. Um, <laughs> Tron, was a, Tron was a great movie. Both of them. Stop it. I would refuse to accept anything else. People, I'll uh, be looking for that debate next week with a, re, a relativity guy. 
and probably the Colin show after. And then two weeks, Mallory. Uh, we'll see you all. Thank you very much. I'm muted. I got to read it again. Silver Phoenix Rising says, I just started the stream tune and I got to say, I love all Lil Na Lego Nation Thompson you got. And yes, the perfect place for him is on the side of the globe. Also, maybe Antarctica. Awesome. Thank you.